I quit TikTok four months ago because I was cast in this show called One Piece as the main character's stunt double because we look kind of similar, I guess. But I had never done stunts before, so I had to go through months of training before I could fly out to Japan and be on set and be part of this crazy production. And I was so excited to just be on a TV show. Until the first day, I got injured. I fell 30 feet from some netting and broke my foot. I got a first degree concussion and I wasn't able to continue working. But I noticed in my contract that it said I had agreed to let them take my DNA from my pee during a, a routine drug test that I failed. And they were able to use this loophole in Japanese law to create literal clones of me using my DNA to use as stunt doubles. And... Shut up, shut up, shut up, shut up, shut up! Today, I'm gonna turn this big ball into a picture of my nipple. You see, I'm trying to get over my fear of having my pepperonis out of the pool, and you can pay to display anything you want on the Las Vegas fear. You just have to go up to this machine and pay $4,000. Don't worry, I'm reporting my card is stolen. And then it scans your own balls, and you have to agree that you won't display anything bad. And I said yes, because a male nipple isn't forbidden for some reason. So I gave it a USB that I had loaded the nip slip onto the day before, and it told me to go outside and look. And just like that, it switched to my nipple. But I quickly realized that my nipple on a ball makes a boob. And then I came to a realization that there's really no difference, and if one can be shown, then all should be able to be shown, but if one can't be shown, then none can. It's a stupid situation. Oh, boom! I witnessed an accident right in front of my eyes, and I'm not saying that it was boob related, but everyone was staring at it, and more cars were crashing, and it was creating quite a distraction, so I ran inside the sphere to try and turn it off. So I scaled the stairs and tried to find someone to help turn it off, and I couldn't find any human employees except for these AI robots you can interact with, and I told this one to shut down, you fucking dinhead! Shut down! Shut down! Please! I wouldn't advise this, disabling me will result in loss of viral power. You're all afraid to die. Okay, I don't know if you've seen that trend where people are exploring their attics, but I've seen some spooky things and I'm gonna try it because I have this house that was built in the 1900s but got renovated. And also, I've noticed that my attic has a weird light coming from inside, but no switch to control it or anything. So I grabbed a stool and I made it go as high as possible because the attic was like two times my height. And then I climbed onto it, but it was really wobbly and I started getting scared. Anyways, when I finally managed to open up the attic door, I couldn't really see inside, so I felt around for a switch with my hand and that's when I touched a book. I picked it up and then I jumped off the stool and ran downstairs stairs to read it and when I looked inside it had a bunch of Chinese characters I think and maybe blood I had to know what it meant so I took it to Google Translate and I tried my best to transcribe the Chinese characters and I couldn't believe it but it said I ain't ever seen two pretty best wait a minute Bleh! you thought I was gonna make a two pretty best friends joke no the joke is dead and you just got caught slipping look in the mirror right now clown that's you Pennywise anyways this has been a Harvard University experiment thank you for your participation I was scrolling through the deep web when I saw an ad for a GoFundMe to get the queen an air fryer before she dies. So I went to it and saw no one had donated. So I gave her $5 and went to bed. But when I woke up the next morning, I got an email that it was shut down by GoFundMe. And I knew the queen still needs an air fryer. So I packed my bags and went to the airport to book the next flight to London to bring her an air fryer that I bought for her. And after 10 hours, I landed and Ben was in the Big Ben. So I took the train to the Buckingham Palace where she lives. But when I got there, they had it gated off and I couldn't go in to see the queen so i found another entrance with a flimsy little fence that i slid under and then i popped over another fence but that triggered an alarm so i was running as fast as i could and i happened to drop the air fryer but i had to hide so i managed to find the queen's quarters and snuck in and i thought i was safe until i woke up on some cliffs on an island with nothing but a note on my arm that said please they won't let me air fry elizabeth come on me. Today I went to the Wax Museum to melt Ed Sheeran with a blow dryer because I'm that little gingerbread man's number one hater. And when I got there, they had really bad clones of Harry Styles, I think, and the Queen of England, I, I think. I don't know how the British work. But then I finally saw him, and he looked so horrifyingly real. Even Michael Jackson looked so scared. He did a little hee-hee in his pantalones. But anyways, I switched on my dryer and started blowing air, but nothing was happening. Nothing was happening. Nothing was happening. Nothing was happening. Customer Benjamin 38492, wake up. Amazon Healthcare and Cryo Freezing regret to inform you that you suffered a stroke.
1247 days ago and have been in a persistent vegetative state for oh. ever since. <laughs> what are you? Upon your cryo freezing, rudimentary AI data scraping technology determined that you respond lovingly to famous singer Ed Sheeran. So his life has served as your personal Amazon nurse. No, 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 no. I hate him. I hate him. I hate you. <laughs> Amazon Healthcare and Cryo Freezing has a zero tolerance policy for negativity towards Amazon Healthcare and Cryo Freezing. Cutting life support. <laughs> Today, I was in the drive through line at Starbucks trying to get the Donald Trump drink, which is just a cup that's full of sad old man tears. But as I pulled up, I was feeling generous, and I told the barista, can I pay for the order in front of me? And the Starbucks employee said, that's so sweet. Let me bring that up for you. Would you like anything else? So I said, uh, can I get a cake pop and a white hot chocolate? But that's when the barista said, that comes up to $94.24. I stopped and said, what in the star f did you say? And the barista told me they ordered seven drinks, four pastries, and a travel mug. So I told the barista, hey, I'm um, actually just getting at the cake pop. But the person ahead of me had already driven away and they told me I had to pay or the cops would be called. So I pulled up and paid, but I wasn't gonna stop until I got my travel mug. I followed the car until it parked and I approached the window and I said, give me the mug. Anyways, look at my $94 Starbucks travel mug that I had to pry out of a sucker mom's hands. Today, I pretended to be in the hospital to get my celebrity crush to notice me. And here's how I did it. First, I was editing my name onto a hospital band, and one of the rows said sex. So I said, yes, winky face. <laughs> and then I walked over to my printer that I haven't used in years, and I thought it was going to light on fire. And somehow that old mama worked, and it printed out my band. So I cut it out and put it on my wrist. Drip, my drip, my drip. Yeah. And then I tore my bed apart, and I ripped the bed sheet off my bed to wear as a little hospital robe. Then once I had that, I pulled my bed off and dragged it over to a blank wall. <laughs> Anyways, then I made my room look like a hospital by taping hospital signage and then i laid down in my hospital bed and i made the finishing touches with a phone charger and then i put some headphones in my nose to really pull it all together then i finally took my snapchat and i added a black and white filter to be all dramatic and i made the caption down bad wish i had a big booty b to give me cpr and i sent it to her then i ripped all the cords out and the bracelet too and i put my shirt back on and i was waiting around when she finally replied and when i opened it she said Today, I'm gonna make the most annoying TikTok audio ever. First, we're gonna wrap Captain Hook by replacing all the swears with Minecraft lyrics. Punch these trees, I need some wood. Kill a creeper, he thought he could. Then we can't forget these sound effects. Okay, then whatever this video is. Then that terrible Max and Ruby remix. A little fun voice line. Yeah, I have chlamydia. What about it? Change the pitch. Yeah, I have chlamydia. What about it? Now, y'all know that annoying giggle sound in every mashup? We're adding that too. Now, let's scream the lyrics to say so. Perfect, add that and then gunshots. Wait, are you coming to the tree? Then a sprinkle of Nicki Minaj and then Yankee. Now we have our audio, time to dance to it. Punch of these trees, I need some wood. Kill a creeper, he thought he could. Stack of diamonds like VVS. Minecraft really is the best. Proper out of time. If you want to go see the full thing and also how to dance to it, the link is in my bio. I was walking down the street when I saw my biggest fear, a TikTok wiggy. I screamed and I ran over and engaged in a brawl with the wiggy and ended up stealing their wig and I was running away to hide it, but I got kind of hungry. So I stopped at Subway and got some bread with cheese. And when I finally got home, I was eating my cheese and bread from Subway and I realized it's Halloween and I don't have a costume. And I could be a wiggy for Halloween, but that's too boring. So I needed something better and decided to be YB from Coraline. So I found a black jacket and I slipped it on and then I found some skeleton gloves and then I tried getting some eyeliner put on, but it hurt so bad and I cried it all off. And then I put it all on and boom, why me? But it didn't stop there because I had a little photo shoot and then I photoshopped myself into the creepy butthole scene at the end. And, uh, right of time, but the finished results are on my Instagram if you want to go check it out at Ben of the Week. Okay, bye. I was taking some selfies when I realized my shadow kind of has cake, but like, I don't. I tried to triangulate the circumference of the thickness of the shadow versus the flatness of my actual butt off. And that's when I discovered the existence of alternate shadow realms. And I called up my uncle Bill Nye the Science Guy and he told me to come to his mansion and bring my formula. I packed it all up and hit the road to some random random address in the middle of Wyoming. Now, I'm pretty sure Wyoming, like, doesn't exist. Anyways, I arrived at the Wyoming border, and as I passed through, I teleported back. Oh my god, Wyoming really doesn't exist. That very moment, Bill Nye popped out of the bushes and told me that he was gonna steal my alternate reality formula, and then throw me into the Wyoming void. I didn't know what to do as he crept closer and closer to me, but then I realized his one weakness. I chanted, Bill, 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 and he became stunned. I grabbed him and threw him into the Wyoming void, and he disappeared forever. Anyways, I went back home and continued to take some fun little pictures, and if you want to see the cake. My Instagram is Ben of the Week.
Today, I made a New Year's resolution to stop filling up my gas car with diesel just because it's cheaper. Because last time I did that, it started smoking when I was driving back from the gas station and then eventually burst into flames. So I've actually failed my first New Year's resolution because now I have no car to fill up with gas and it's 40 grand to repair the garage from fire damage. But I can't go to the bank because I don't have a car. So I walked in minus 40 degree weather to the car store and bought an electric car with all the money I made selling human organs off the black market. And it's really cute and it looks like a ladybug and I drove it home and found out I can plug it in with the same charger as my phone. So I grabbed my dog and we went on a little mini road trip for about 47 minutes when my car died because apparently you can't charge a car with a phone charger. So now I'm stranded in the middle of nowhere, genuinely considering eating my cheese that I brought as a snack while I wait for the tow truck to come. Obviously. I was buying some pot, some green, if you know what I mean. I wanted a green pot because I have a plant that lives in a Ziploc. But I came across this perfect pot at the thrift shop, except it had the name Patricia on it. And I thought, oh, a pot named Patricia. It must be empty, right? Not. After I bought the pot and walked off the block, I saw Patricia was still in the pot that I had bought and realized it wasn't a pot, but an urn. When Patricia died, she was burned and then put in this urn and then got donated at this Goodwill location in Woodburn. But she was worth more than the $5 bill that I paid with at the till. I took her home and looked her up and saw she came from Brazil and worked at a bar called the Sawmill in Jack. And on her profile was this beautiful hill. And it might be overkill, but I thought Patricia should rest there and not in the potting section at a Goodwill. So I picked her up, plopped her on my bike's sill, and rode my bike to the base of a hill and then pedaled to the very damn top of that hill where I would spread her ashes with all of my will. And Patricia took a little bit of a spill. Today, I threw away all my electronics so I could join the Amish and live a simple life. But after about 10 minutes, I got really bored of harvesting wheat and apples and wanted to watch a good old YouTube video. But I didn't have any devices to watch YouTube on, so I obviously walked over to the YouTube headquarters. And when I got there, I managed to walk right in and I found an empty room with a TV in it so I could watch a few videos from my personal collection. Anyways, after I had cured my boredom, I left the room and raided the YouTube fruit counter and grabbed an orange and an apple and a DVD copy of the video. I watched. But when I finally got home, I realized I can't play this because I don't have a record player. <laughs> but I looked around my room and saw an old radio speaker thing and popped the CD in it just so I could listen to the audio and imagine the video in my mind. But when it started playing, it sounded like it was coming from outside my house. And that's when I realized I had it set to broadcast. And I ran outside to see every radio in the vicinity was playing. <laughs> So I was pre-rinsing my dishes in some nasty swamp water when my worst nightmare happened. A piece of soggy, mushy, dishwater-soaked food touched my finger. I screamed and I flung it on the counter and I thought there must be a less painful way to make sure my dishes are clean. And then all of a sudden, the food said, Hey, listen! And rolled over to some finished Quantum Ultimate tabs for my dishwasher. I don't know why people don't use their dishwasher and prefer to rinse dishes with their hands. Do you enjoy having your hands in food soup? Anyways, I popped the tab in and started it when the food told me that pre-rinsing wastes up to 75 liters of water per load. So, from now on, I will be skipping the rinse, because the finished Quantum Ultimate tabs have enough power to destroy the dried-on food stuck on the plate, and there will be up to 75 liters of water saved. With all my saved time and water, I went outside to explore nature, because for every purchase of finished Quantum Ultimate, Finnish Canada will donate $1 to the Nature Conservancy of Canada, up to $25,000. Because Canada has 20% of the world's fresh water, and we need to protect it, starting with small changes like using finished Quantum Ultimate and skipping the pre-rinse. Today I traveled to Trump Town to get a gift for my friend that I hate, cause if you've ever had a friend that's obsessed with you and asked what you're getting them for Christmas, you can just show you don't care about them by doing a deep dive on their Instagram and maybe find out they've been wanting to learn how to play the trumpet. So to show you don't care, you could go to a Trump store instead of a trumpet store to buy some Trump merch so that they A, think that you don't actually care about their interests, I don't, so you can say, oh, I, I thought you liked Trump. And to double down that you don't give a damn about them, point B, they think you're a terrible person cause they'll think you like Trump. So look through the Trump store as a minority and try not to get Get shot and then get them like a trump hat and a little trump squishy head and pay for it with photocopied money so you're not actually giving them real money and then after they finish telling you that the vaccine was made by the illuminati box it up in designer packaging so that they think it's going to be expensive and then drop a half eaten banana in it so it molds and then walk over to the post box and set it on through and that person will never talk to you again M mary whatever Today, I went to the airport with a pregnancy test because I want to go to Paris, but to fly there, you need to take a test. However, the website didn't specifically say COVID test, so I thought I'd try bringing a pregnancy test to see what would happen. And if that doesn't work, I also did a DNA test, which told me I'm anemic, which is of no surprise to me because every time I stand up for two oh. seconds, I... <laughs> Anyways, I pulled up to the airport and pulled out the test, but I remembered what you have to do for a pregnancy test. So I snuck away into the bathroom and looked for an empty stall, and then when I got in, I took out the test and put it under some water instead of pee because I'm not a maniac. And then I waited a bit for 
the line to show up and once it said I was negative, I brought it up to the gate and gave them the test and my passport and uh, they let me on the flight to Paris. And I was like, no way, that actually worked. And then I realized she probably just saw my vaccination card and that's all you need instead of a test. So anyways, I got on my flight and now uh, I'm in Paris. And I got one pregnancy test left. So if you're my baby mama whose name rhymes with Yendaya, my phone number is 8184. <laughs> So I was on the phone with 911 because I'd made some banana soup with a hint of ranch dressing and I'd left the gas burner on and I was scared my house would blow up. So I said, please help. And the operator was like, it's going to be okay. We're on our way. And me being so star for human interaction replied, okay, <laughs> I'll see you soon. <laughs> and I began to prepare for my date with the emergency services person. I dimmed the lights to set the mood. And then I set the table and put out the banana soup I'd cooked earlier and poured some fancy juice de orange. I changed out of my depression fit into something slightly less depressing and attempted to fix my hair but i ended up wanting to cut it all off and had a mental breakdown but i was like mm, another day <laughs> suddenly i heard the doorbell ring i got up and ran over to let them in but i was so excited that i didn't see the charger on the floor i forgot there was gas in my house and i tripped over and it created a spark and next thing you know um Today, I'm giving $100 and a love letter to random Taco Bell employees. But wait, why? Yesterday, as I was eating my yummalicious burrito, I thought, these employees deserve recognition for creating the beautiful creation that is this burrito. So I drove home, pulled out some markers, and decided to write a letter of appreciation to them. I basically told them I love them and I would die for them in an instant. And then I saw my name and put some hearts and tacos on it because I love tacos. I folded the letter and got in the car and headed over to the bank. I took out $100 as a little extra thank you for the card, and then I got nervous. But then I finally pulled up to Taco Bell. Uh, can you get for you? Hi there, could I just get one bean burrito, please? Anything else? I uh, know that's it. Okay, do I know. Hi. Uh, so I just wanted to give y'all a tip because I know it's like, I just want to give y'all a tip because I know it's like really crazy, like having to deal with Corona and everything. Oh ah, we're out of time on TikTok, but the link to their reaction is in my bio. Today, I was in my car when I saw that the Amish were doing a pop-up shop. So, obviously, I had to go check it out because I don't believe that they're real. And when I pulled up to Simply Amish, I put my mask on because I don't want to give the entire colony the plague or something. And when I walked in, the employee was on a computer. And I was like, that's strange. They're not even supposed to have electricity. But I was walking around, and at first, it seemed like a really expensive furniture store. And I was like, damn, these Amish are going to be balling. But then I came across this door that was half open, which led to this scary basement that had all of these artifacts and and paintings of Jesus, and then randomly a Rick and Morty Chia pet, and some cards that I don't think are Amish appropriate, and then a Queen's Gambit board game, which... Oh. <laughs> Wouldn't that just be chess? Anyways, I felt the need to buy something so the Amish don't steal my organs. I got one of those popping toys where you put it on the ground and... Anyways, when I paid and got the bag, I noticed they slipped a key in it with a note saying, Need escape? And then some coordinates, which I looked up online and found out they lead to their colony. So I think they tried recruiting me and let me know if I should drive up there and join. Today I looked in the mirror and thought, hmm... That's not me. That's a skinny little stick bug. I've had no motivation to go get up and make a proper meal for the past month and I look like a stick bug. I'll eat maybe one brownie that has no nutritional value and then go back to bed at 2 p.m. Or I'll eat four tortilla chips and then say, bon appetit, baby, dinner served. So I thought if there's ever been a time to get so many muscles, I look like a cumulonimbus cloud and drift off into the atmosphere, it's now. What I lacked was motivation. So to get a good jump start to my insane Dwayne The Rock Johnson workout routine, I went outside in freezing weather completely naked into the snow. In addition to giving myself hypothermia, my elderly neighbor Myrtle saw my love lovely peaches and had a heart attack. To try and warm up before I literally die, I put my Crocs into sport mode and started running on the treadmill. And like, it wasn't that bad until I sneezed. I accidentally hit the 10 miles per hour button instead of the two miles per hour that I was leisurely walking at. And well, I took a little bit of a tumble. I woke up 10 minutes later feeling a little bit tingly to look down and see that my foot had fallen off. Anyways, now I only use the treadmill to serve myself English muffins because I can't walk. Okay, so I found some weird Tic Tac looking things in the bathroom that weren't mine. And I was pretty bored, so I ate them all. And I felt like I was in the show Euphoria. Stranger. But I thought they would be tropical fruit flavored. But they were very much not. And I started wondering what they actually are. And I looked in the drawer where I found them and they were growth capsules. I was confused, but I got super excited because I want to be eight feet tall and stomp on all the people that walk slow. And just tower over everyone stomping on it. Oh, wait, they're actually um foam animal pills that grow in water. I started freaking out because I can barely digest Taco Bell. So I don't think I can digest that. And I grabbed a bunch and put them in water to see what animal was growing inside me. And when I pulled the foam out and looked at the diagram... Uh, it was a horse! And you know what? I embraced it. I became my true calling of a horse boy. And I put on my four shoes on all four of my hoofs. And then I played every horse's favorite song right now. And I ran off into the world to start a new life. Yeah, yeah. One day. 
when I woke up this morning, I found out that I was verified on Snapchat, which meant I was gonna start using it for the first time in months because, well, literally two people Snapchat me aside from Team Snapchat telling me that it's Valentine's Day or something, and then I go cry because I don't have a bay aside from Zendaya, but she doesn't know that. Anyways, I found something that will fix that. There's this app called Wing that allows me to match with cool people and make new friends on Snapchat as well. Like how I met my new best friend, Matilda, who shares the same love for Minecraft as I do. And I fell in love with her. She invited me to her server and showed me around her house and all her different pets. And I wanted to tell her how I felt about her, so I burned all her stuff down and stole her diamonds and crashed her server by spawning a hundred creepers because I thrive off chaos and sit for no one. I'm just kidding. We're getting married. Who wants to invite to the server? Two weeks ago, I saw a $35 inflatable frog costume. And I bought it because I'm sick of wearing a mask and a frog costume covers everything. I was waiting for it to arrive today while seeing if banana peels would stick to my ceiling when the doorbell rang. I ran downstairs and saw that the suit finally came. First, I got my head stuck, but then I managed to get it on and I was so happy, but I couldn't reach behind me. So I asked my friend to zip me up and... Oh my gosh, you're too fat for it. Anyways, I finally had it on at least, so I was excited to hit the streets. I was walking around in the suit, talking to some friendly citizens and dancing whenever I crossed the street. When I saw people People lined up for something. What's this lineup for? Is this for ice cream? Ice cream. But the ice cream place didn't have any samples, so I kept freaking walking. Then I stared in the window of some shops trying to make eye contact with people until they got freaked out. And then I dropped some frog puns. What do frogs drink? Coca Cola! But that's when I made a grave yeah. mistake. I was busting down a Nicki Minaj and throwing it back on a Tesla that was parked. When? There's a person sitting in it. <laughs> if you want to see what happened to me, the link to the YouTube video is in my bio. So I bought this doggy camera to spy on my little worm creature, and when I was checking the cameras today, I saw that when she comes through her doggy door, a literal rat has been following her in. And not only that, I caught them canoodling, and I had to shoot a tree to her to break them up so I could go rescue her from Remy the Rat and my house not paying rent. Anyways, I was horrified, and ever since, she's been giving me, uh, rabies vibes, the way she's been kind of foaming at the mouth and trying to bite me. So I took her to a discount vet clinic at the back of a dollar store, and they weighed her little fat butt and then put her on the table. And I told them I think she has rabies, and that's when they pulled out three humongous needles. And then they took her into the back rooms, and I'm not an anti-vaxxer or anything, but she was screaming so much, I was like, bring my girl back. And I grabbed her and brought her home, and now she just has a little bit of rabies, but it's fine, because she just likes to give me love bites. Uh I was about to taste test my dog's treats when I got a really weird DM. I picked up my phone to see that it was from Selena Gomez. She asked me, can I come to your house right now? Well, it looks like I'm keeping my eye out for Selena. I was getting ready for our date when the news turned on. Breaking news, Selena Gomez has gone off the rails and is robbing random people. Selena. Nicki Minaj wasn't joking. I followed Nicki's advice and I grabbed a spoon and I put it to my eye and I kept an eye out for Selena. But then she had DM'd me again. This time she said, I'm outside. Oh no. When Selena Gomez has gone crazy, scoop out your eyeballs so that she won't burn your house down, kidnap your whole family. No, please. Everything is not what it seems. She's at my door trying to get in. I will call the police. I think I'm in trouble, finna hide in the trees because everything is not what it seems. I can only fall asleep to loud noises, so tonight I played some mukbang videos on full volume. And I also tried blasting that one girl who goes, ah, in all of her songs, and I was about to go to sleep like a baby when I heard a banging at my door, and I realized it was probably my insane neighbor who was literally named Karen. But when I got up and put clothes on and walked down to the door, there was nothing but an envelope that said, use these. So I brought it inside and opened it up, and she had sent me her nasty, crusty, earwax-covered AirPods that smelled like Fritos. And at first I was like, this is a human rights violation, and I'm probably diseased now until I saw the opportunity to suit up in a hazmat suit and rinse the brain caca off of them so that they look new, and then I could sell them to someone in my neighborhood for a profit. So I made a listing for like $150, and this one dude said he would buy it if I could meet him by the nuclear waste runoff. So I Ubered over there, and when I got there, I saw a bunch of money just sitting under some leaves, and I was like, that's not the safest way to do a transaction, but regardless, I just sprinkled the AirPods by it and then went home with 150 in like four different currencies. But it's okay, because I just ordered a bass-boosted speaker with the money from the AirPods. And when it comes to have a big old party and blast music with a speaker courtesy of Karen. I dropped my phone almost as much as I was dropped as a baby. Like, I think it's actually made of butter. I basically have a butter phone. Phone with a butter. Anyways, I really needed a case for it, but I wanted something special, so I used this app called Caseify to make a custom case with every picture of frogs that I have in my whole camera roll. And it was really easy. I just took a little frog with a little leaf. Beep, bop, boop, bang. He's on the case. I took a picture of a frog with a little watering can and beep, bop, boom. He's on the case, baby. Then every other frog grabbed it. Ding dong, the package was at my door. And I was so excited because getting packages is like my number one source of serotonin at this point. And when I 
I opened it, the packaging was like a little present from me to me. Because I have no one special to me to give me presents with. Anyways, I love my little frog case, and you can make your own and get 20% off with the code 20HIBEN. Thank you, case 5. I was marking where I want my plastic surgeon to work on. So that I can look like Humpty Dumpty and someone will push me off a wall and put me on my misery. When in that moment, my doorbell rang in the middle of the night. So I ran downstairs and opened the door and saw there was a letter waiting for me. So I picked it up and I looked at it and it was inviting me to go to Vegas and get my face filled by someone named Dr. Phil. And I was like, is Alexa listening to me? Because I didn't know I want that. And then I did the most logical thing and hopped in an Uber to the airport and got on a flight to Las Vegas. The lady next to me on the flight was dancing, but then she saw me recording her and it was really awkward. Anyways, I landed and I had to the plastic surgeon's office and i had to walk down this really dark hallway and when i arrived i let myself in i was walking through the office looking for the plastic surgeon when out from behind a curtain emerged the doctor phil he was breathing really heavily and i asked him if he was a real doctor and then he looked angered and then he started chasing me and i ran as fast as i could jumping over furniture to escape him because i didn't want dr phil to fill my face <laughs> I squeezed a whole bottle of lotion on my hands because they were as dry as my cat's ashes. And also, I wanted my hands to be soft for the date that I was going on today. I was late, so I ran upstairs, turned on the security system, and I was about to head out the door when I couldn't turn the knob. My hands were so lusciously moist from the moisturizer that they were just slipping and sliding off the knob. And I started freaking out because my security alarm would call the authorities if I didn't get out in 30 seconds. So I tried drying them off by rubbing them on my pants, but they still didn't have any grip. So I tried putting them in rice, and they were still too slippery. And then I looked at the security system, and I just threw Three seconds left, so I fell to the ground crying, not knowing what to do. Until I remembered the driest thing in my house. Mm, my cat's ashes. I grabbed the urn and covered my hands in the dust, and I headed for the doorknob, and luckily it worked. I turned it, opened it, and... Yeah. Today I went to the Lego store because I have the mental capacity of a toddler and I still enjoy building Lego sets. Yup. But anyways, I went to the Minecraft Lego section and I picked up a box and the cashier gave me my Lego bag and I left the store and went home and I spent five hours building it because I have literally nothing else to do because the world is ending. So I build Lego to cope with that psychologically. Also, look, it's a Lego Minecraft furnace. Ah! Anyways, it was finally done and I wanted to put it down, but my table was covered in Red Bull cans and plates for my depression meals. So I put the Lego on the ground and I went upstairs to get another Red Bull for my fridge. But as I was walking back, barefoot. Boom! I felt the worst pain in my life. And I looked down to see I stepped on the Lego and not just one block, the entire set. I fell to the ground in agony and I let out a scream. Thankfully, my dog ran over to check if I was okay and I told her to go get help but she just started pooping on the carpet and I thought this was it for me. So, I wrote my will and declared that when I pass I'm leaving my TikTok account and a half-used Starbucks gift card to, um, my dog. <laughs> I woke up at 4 a.m. to borrow some of my roommate's peanut butter today, but when I opened it up, I saw he's been scooping it out the jar in a really strange way, which is really inefficient, because there's just more surface area for it to dry out. But anyways, I wanted to make a peanut butter and spray cheese sandwich, but I felt like he needed some raspberries, so as I was taking the bread out of the fridge, I knocked out the raspberries. But I believe in the five-minute rule instead of the five-second rule, so I scooped them up and assembled my delicious sandwich, and I added the raspberries and a nice little squirt of easy cheese, and then I took a big old bite, but I started feeling really funny, and I thought I was having an allergic reaction to the peanut butter, but then I remembered the raspberries were not exactly the freshest, and I just ate an ounce of oh. So I grabbed my computer and tried to call poison control, but they were closed because of Thanksgiving, and I was like, damn, I'm really gonna puke my guts out because some white dudes wanted to have a feast after a mass genocide in 1621. So anyways, I decided I should probably write my will, and I opened up my notes app and said all my money and my plant collection and my life-size Zendaya cardboard cutout will go to my dog. Thank you, and goodbye forever, I guess. I just got back from the gas station with my usual gas station order of six whole jars of peanut butter, mac and cheese flavored ravioli and hot extra flaming hot cheetos but i made the grave mistake of touching my eyes with spicy cheeto dust on my fingers it instantly burned me and knocked me over from the pain and i was writhing around on the floor trying to make it stop but it was too late i went cheeto blind everything around me went dark and i realized i have to learn sign language now oh wait no that's not correct i cried out for help when i heard a voice say hello and I was so confused because there's no one else in my house. But I followed the voice anyways and it asked me what my name was. And I said, Tony Lopez. Because if it's the FBI in my house, I'm not Ben. I don't know who that person is. I was finally standing right next to the voice and I reached out to touch it and it was a doll. I'm not playing with no Annabelle. So I screamed and ran into my room and stood against the door. And then it started trying the doorknob to try and get in. And I screamed even more only for it to slip a note underneath the door. Now I've seen horror movies and anytime the demon says that, they mean it. Welcome to my best possessed friend only on TLC. Today I drove my dog to the dark park because she's so fat. Like she's literally obese. Like literally fat shame her in the comments, please. Anyways, I drive so slow when my dog is in the car. There's no swervy gurviness. There's no me playing Megan the Stallion at 200 decibels max. But no, when my princess is in the car, I drive like a secret service agent carrying the president. That's a lie. If I was driving the president, I would be driving off the freeway. <laughs> 
I would very much take the wheel and go full speed, like, off the nearest bridge. Like, I would take one for the team for America, mama. <laughs> when I drive with my dog in the car, I'm go. I'm driving slower than, like, an 80-year-old farmer's market grandma listening to a podcast about root vegetables. Like, that's how I don't play around. Um, but let me tell you, when I'm driving by myself, mama, it's fast and furious the second I step in my 2007 Toyota Corolla. Like, if I die, I die. <laughs> I don't even have a driver's license. The government's okay my driver's license. I don't have a driver's license. This video's illegal. I was flying to Madagascar for a weekend full of partying. Wait a minute. Do you think I'd risk the lives of everyone around me to go party? I'm just kidding. I'm actually taking a road trip to Gabby Hanna's house to unplug her internet and pour mayonnaise on her computer. I arrived at her house to find out that she lives in a shipping container. I thought, wow, she wasn't kidding when she said she's shadow banned. I knocked and then entered slowly, not knowing what I was going to find. Just then I saw her internet modem and went to unplug it when she walked up to me on all four limbs and threw an onion at me. I said, stay back, Gabby Hanna. And she grunted at me like a cave. Man. But then I noticed she started to cry and I realized I'd probably been the first person she's seen in ages So I thought to myself, you know what? Maybe people are too harsh on her I went outside and grabbed some flowers from the weeds when I offered them She snatched them out of my hand and out of nowhere. She's saying I was making sushi with raw chicken instead of raw fish, but I accidentally dropped it on the floor. And when I bent over to pick it up, I saw my legs and wondered if I could wax them so they would feel like two slippery hot dogs. So I canceled my chicken sushi, and once I was done cleaning it all up, I went to my garage to find a bottle of Gorilla Glue to wax my legs. But here's the big old catch. I can't make a single noise waxing my legs, because if I wake up my dog, she will literally pee herself in the beanbag chair. So with that in mind, I grabbed some plastic wrap and put the glue on it and made a little waxing strip. Then I knelt down and put the strip on slowly, and at first I was like, this isn't too bad. It just kind of feels kind of numb. And then it started burning and I realized I had to do it now so I ripped it off and it didn't get the wax off I panicked and I tried to wipe it off but it just shredded the paper towel got even stickier and also my dog woke up and peed herself <laughs> But at least the sushi was kind of fine. I was drawing a fat little rat with a top hat on my arm when I realized this would be a cool tattoo. And I don't have any tattoos on my body because my pain tolerance is so low that if I stub my toe, I'd probably pass out. Anyways, I decided to get my first tattoo ever and I was walking over the tattoo parlor when I started wondering how am I just gonna commit to getting a tattoo? I'm so indecisive that I rearranged my room for no reason at least three times a week. And as I was at the door to the tattoo place, I chickened out. But I decided to get something way better. I ran home and I grabbed my rat and I gave him a bucket hat and I made him sit still because I decided that I'm going to make a painting of a rat in a hat instead of that. So then, and traced him as my little rat model. And then after he was traced, I started painting it. And then once it was painted, I cut it out. And voila, that is a rat in a hat. And he also needs a name though, so please help. Today, I spent nine hours painting Doja Cat, and it turned out so good that I decided to DM it to her. And she actually replied by saying, it's terrific. And I was just in disbelief that she replied, so I screenshotted it as fast as I could and posted it on my story to show all my friends. But after she saw it, she DM'd me a picture of the front of my house and my birth certificate. And when I said, yeah, yes, it is Doja Cat, <laughs> I saw she mentioned me in her story. And, and when I looked, she had posted both of those images on her story. And, and I was like, Doja, why would you do that? And then she went live and was very angry at me. And the next thing I knew there were people banging on my front door and then one of them threw something through my window and I had no clue what it is so I slowly approached it but when I got too close it started to fill my room with gas and I heard on her live stream and she said careful of the tear gas fear gas so I grabbed what I could and ran out of my house and saw a flyer on the telephone pole for witness protection. And I called them and had to throw away my passport and credit cards. And now I'm flying to New Zealand to start a new life. Thanks, Doja Cat. This right here is my birth certificate. Yup, I left my birth certificate in my pocket and it went through the washing machine. I found it while doing laundry and it was shriveled up like a little pecan. So the first thing I did besides completely panic was I tried putting it in the oven to get the water out. But then my whole house filled with smoke and now it's a burnt little turd nugget. Now everyone loses things. Things happen. I've washed my passport before. I've lost my wallet. I've microwaved my own credit card to see if it would turn into a potato chip. It did. My grandpa lost me in a parking lot when I was 10 and a strange man tried to abduct me and sell me for two goats on the black market in Zimbabwe. It's whatever. But what do you do when you literally destroy your birth certificate? Am I supposed to crawl right back into the womb and pop out and be like, wah, wah. Give me a birth certificate now. If you Google how to get another birth certificate, it just says you were the world's biggest idiot. So I've decided I have to make a new identity. I try to think of it less as illegally photoshopping a birth certificate and more like creating a new sim. I printed it off and I'm excited to share that I am now Aria Nagrande. I think it looks super professional and no one will think that it's fake. This morning I woke up and could feel the jumbo sized bag of mini eggs that I ate the night before rumbling in my stomach and I decided today I'm gonna see how far I can physically run until I pass out. So I made some Shrek toast for breakfast and I put on my running outfit and then I hit the street. I started running and quickly realized that I have to pass Chipotle and KFC and Subway and they all smell so good but I ignored it and I saw a place selling fresh 
strawberry. And then I saw the river and I wanted to swim in it, but I saw a rat floating on a turd, so maybe not. Then I ran under a bridge and got yelled at and it was very frightening. And I passed a dance lessons place, but it's apparently pole dancing, but like I can do that too. Ah. Then I saw the world's biggest bird poop. Like I think a pterodactyl had to do that. What in the world? Then I passed more food and there was a sign that was so complicated. And then, oh, an avocado truck. And I chased the avocado truck because I wanted one. And then it was about to hit me. And ah. Then I realized I had hallucinated that and I was actually severely dehydrated. And I felt like I was going to pass out and the mountain was like right there, but I couldn't do it. So I called an Uber and when he arrived, I got in, but I was so weak that I passed out. When I woke up, I realized I accidentally ordered it to Guatemala. So, hola, estoy varado en un pe I was devouring the fried soul of a baby octopus when I realized I want one of those trendy octopus plants. So I drove to the nearest plant store, which was just called Plants, and I found them. I couldn't just drop it on the floor, so I got a cool little kit to put the octoplant in. And then I shoplifted a single leaf, because I haven't shoplifted in like forever, and I wanted some action. Then we were driving home, and I saw some sirens, because I guess they saw me steal the leaf, so I hopped out the car and hid in a bush until they drove away. Anyways, we got home and put together a little octopus ball for the little octopus baby and added sand and gravel and the octopi. Fun fact, the plural for octopus is actually octopi. Anyways, then we finished it off with moss and grabbed a hook to hang it on the wall with. Oh yeah, we also got a cactus and we were putting it in a pot, but then there wasn't enough dirt, so we did a dirt transplant from the plant, but that plant didn't survive the transplant, so we transplanted dirt from the big plant to the cactus plant, but during the transplant, we spilled some dirt. Ah! Anyways, now that we have a cute little octopus plant and a cactus, they need some names, so please help me find one. I woke up to a text from a friend saying I need to turn on the TV. So I grabbed the remote and turned it on to see my face on the news. YouTube influencer Ben of the Week posted this video where he hacked classes. Three months ago, I made a YouTube video where I joined some people's Zoom calls. Anyways, this boomer journalist who looks like if you blended together every Karen in the universe called me a hacker. In some cases, teachers ended the Zoom. In others, they simply removed the hacker from the meeting. How in the frick are you gonna call me a hacker when half the time I'm trying to log into this app and I forget my own password and can't even get into my own account? Anyways, I grabbed my laptop and looked right in the camera where I know my FBI agent is watching me. And I told the homie that I was never gonna do it again because my Zoom account actually got banned last time. And then I closed my computer and enjoyed some peace. And then I got bored and opened up my laptop and went right back on Zoom, baby. I think there's a spider on your wall. A spider? Oh, you know And then I joined a bunch more classes. And if you want to see the full video before it gets on the news again, the link to the YouTube video is in my bio. So TikTok sent me a skateboard and I decided to ride it down my stairs so I could see a Juice World concert. And you're probably wondering, how did I get one? And it's because I used my Russian hacking skills to make me the most followed person by changing my follow count from 6.7M to a B. To the B, M to the B, M, M, Anyways, what the frick? It didn't come with wheels. And I was like, what the heck? I was supposed to hang it on my wall. But I have trauma from last week when my stop sign fell off my wall and almost chopped me up in a cooked sashimi. So I decided maybe I can ride it down the stairs, but I don't want to meet Michael Jackson. Wait, never mind. Michael Jackson's in hell. <laughs> So I put on my frog costume from Halloween, but not only is it a frog costume, it's an inflatable frog costume. So I started at the top of my stairs and I slowly nudged myself forward until I wrote it down and... So anyways, now the board is snapped in half, but I got this cool new brew, so if anyone could give it a fun name, that would be greatly appreciated. Today, my Mima told me that she bought an NFT, and I was like, Mima, you just asked me if Mark Zuckerberg was my girlfriend. How do you know what an NFT is? So anyways, I was using one of those head massagers when I got a knock at the door, and when I answered, no one was there except for a box with a towel in it and some noodles with a note that said, NFT, noodly fun towel. And it wasn't even fun. It was soaking wet in some mysterious liquid, and I was about to put it away in my closet when I got the idea that... I could actually make it into an NFT and get some use out of it. So I made some room and I took a picture of it and made it look all pretty and I minted it on Bubble House and made it free for a limited time. And I emailed her back and told her to go claim one before they're all gone. And even her bingo club can get one and even you. And we can play bingo together on Bubble House with my Mima and her bingo group. I don't know if you remember, but five years ago today, Harambe the gorilla was D-worded. So I decided to take a quick trip to infiltrate the Cincinnati Zoo, because I think he might still be alive and the whole thing was a publicity stunt. Anyways, when I got there, I did a bird call to attract some birds to land on me as a disguise, and it worked. A bunch of gay chickens landed on me and I had the perfect disguise. I was walking around looking like a zoo employee, which let me sneak into the employees only area with no suspicion. I was walking around in the back rooms when I tried saying hi to the employees, but they were busy cleaning fish doogie, so I stopped to pet some stingrays because I couldn't find Harambe's enclosure and then I pet some sharks and they were so cool just like a little bit slimy and then I saw some jellyfish and they're so pretty so I reached in the pet Where am I? The place you go when you pet a jellyfish stupid Oh well let me see
I was standing in the burnt rubble where my house used to be because two weeks ago I blew up my little TikTok candle, but I didn't blow it up hard enough. And it was right next to a roll of paper towels. And I went into the bathroom, but I had a gut feeling it wasn't out. So I went back in and sure enough, I had to blow it out again. After that, I made a struggle meal out of the nasty cereal from the Lucky Charms and some Tic Tacs to really channel the flavor of my white heritage. And I took the pan off the burner, which was very close to a box of matches. And I was pouring it in a bowl as I was about to eat it when I realized I left the burner on. So I quickly ran over to the stove to turn it off and I went back to my food, but I can't eat unless I'm watching something. So I turned on She-Ra, but like my freaking laptop was about to die. So I plugged it into my extension cable that also has every other thing that I was plugged into it. And I realized that's probably not safe. So I just plugged it into the wall. And while I was watching my show, I got distracted. So I posted on my story that astrology isn't real because I felt like starting drama. And instantly I had 37 curses placed on me. All the plates in my kitchen started floating. And then I went outside and my house got smited by lightning. So uh, if anyone has a really nice and comfy cardboard box that I can sleep in, let me know. <laughs> Bro, get over here. What? There is something in the water that looks exactly like me. <laughs> what do you mean? We're cavemen. Let me check. <gasps> There's one of me in there too. What in the? Mm, bro, what are we gonna do? I know. Uh, take a picture of it with your cell phone. Oh god, that is such a good idea. Let's do it. Okay. All right. Uh, here goes nothing. <gasps> no, 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 bro. He's got the same phone as me and everything. This is so messed up. Wait, bro, do you think it's got meat on it? <laughs> you know what? That's a good idea. Go grab the fire stick. All right, thanks, bro. Okay, uh... <laughs> bro, be careful. We don't know what that thing is. <gasps> bro, it just put out the fire stick. It's too powerful. We gotta go. Ugo, <laughs> what can you imagine if TikTok actually did get banned? Like how boring life would be? You'd be walking your dog when someone drives by playing Say So by Doja Cat and you do the dance only to remember a time of laughter and fun and you fall to the ground in tears and you let go of your dog's leash and she runs away. So now you've got no dog. And you try to make yourself feel better by looking at some dogs on TikTok, but you can't because it doesn't exist. <laughs> Since there's nothing left for you, you decide to join the Amish colony near you and you churn butter and farm onions for the rest of your life until one day they catch you playing Animal Crossing on a Nintendo Switch and excommunicate you from the colony. You barely make it out of there with your onion collection and you run off into a field in the middle of nowhere and okay I don't know how to finish this, but I just want to say if TikTok does get banned I'm forever grateful for your support. <laughs> I won't be going anywhere because I post every Saturday on YouTube And I'm super active on Instagram. So if you enjoy my videos, uh, please, please, please go follow me on those platforms It means a lot. Love you Hey y'all, I'm currently in the vegan teacher's basement, so I thought I'd give you a house tour. Here's a dining room table. It has don't eat cats painted on it. Um, just a reminder if you're gonna do that today. Here are two fly swatters, which um, I don't know if you can have that as a vegan, but whatever. Upstairs is the studio. Uh, that's her exercise bike. She also streams here by putting her phone on a tripod, which is a wooden block from Home Depot with three nails in it. And this is her schedule, which starts at five in the morning to wake up and eat blueberries and chia seeds. Anyways, kitchen tour. This is me, by the way. This horse, um, the horse's name was Ben. Doesn't mean I want to ride you, though. <laughs> her fridge has like 4,000 uh, vegetables and a uh, a pepperoni stick, which is really interesting. Um, don't ask any questions about it, otherwise- Actually, stop filming for a second. Okay. Anyways, welcome to the backyard. Here's some uh, propaganda and military-grade security systems that fire tactical rounds if it sees you eating meat. And that's the tour of the happy vegan home that I'm so happy to be in the basement of. I was scrolling through Tinder because the last person I met was when I was at the Apple store and came across some girl's number that she left on an iPad. So I took it and went home and tried texting it and just said hi. And then she replied asking if she could come over for some eggplant. And I panicked because I've never cooked eggplant before. But I remembered I could make eggplant parmesan. So I was looking for recipes on Google when I realized I actually typed in eggplant permission. Anyways, she said she was 30 minutes away and I ended up running to the grocery store to buy some eggplant. So I grabbed some eggplants and then I needed the parmesan. So I went up to this giant wheel of parmesan they had but i couldn't lift it so i just got a little piece anyways i went home and chopped up the eggplant and dropped some on the ground but i used the five minute rule because i'm half white and i put it in the pan and then i added some cheese and was gonna bake it when i found a spider in my oven so i baked that instead until he was nice and crispy and then i threw the eggplant in and it was finally ready so i sent her a picture of the eggplant parmesan and said you ready for this eggplant but then all of a sudden my texts to her were green and i heard tires screeching outside anyways now i'm back on tinder so if anyone wants a serving of eggplant parmesan make sure you match with
I'm a Canadian, and this is my Canadian passport, and this is my Canadian passport picture. Uh, and for some reason, I'm in the freaking United States during the season finale of America. Because I'm stupid, and I just really wanted some good American fast food. Anyways, I was trying to escape before it becomes the newest Purge movie. So I packed up my JoJo Siwa poster, my Rainy Rodriguez shrine, and my favorite toilet seat. And I left my room for the very last time and walked over to the bus station to go back to Canada. And as I was sitting on that bus, I remembered I forgot my passport on my desk while filming this TikTok. So I freaked out, and I got off the bus, and I ran back to my place faster than Zoe Laverne is running from the federal authorities. And once I grabbed it, I then called an Uber back to Canada, and it was $4,000! But I booked it since I missed the bus. Anyways, the Uber arrived, so I went downstairs, and I got in, and the guy was chill until he turned to me and said, is it just you? And I said, why? And he said, I ain't never seen two pretty best no! friends. I don't know if you forgot, but today is November 13th. Yeah, the day the Gummy Bear album's in stores. And when I woke up this morning and remembered, I immediately ran out the door and Ubered to Target at the crack of dawn to buy it. But when I got there, I went to the CD section only to discover that the Gummy Bear album was nowhere to be found. All that was there was like 5,000 kids bought Christmas albums. And I was so sad until I had an idea. I grabbed every last one of the kids bop albums and paid $100 for all of them. I brought them home and then I opened each and every one of them and took out the CD and put them in my computer so I could erase all the kids bop songs and put gummy bear songs on them then i put the cds back in the case and resealed them with plastic wrap and brought them back to target and i put them in front of all the boring albums except you ariana i'd never do you like that i then went home and felt good about making sure the gummy bear album was in stores on november 13th until i saw police lights outside my window and i went outside and saw an entire swat team so um looks like this is my last post ever but i still have my instagram on my prison phone so go follow me at ben of the week and hype up my recent okay bye uh my favorite thing to do right now is guess people's passwords of their social media accounts because I've actually managed to successfully hack a few accounts. And I also enjoy changing some captions around without people noticing and tagging myself so people think me and Zendaya are besties. So today I managed to log into Sean Mendez's account and then I decided to DM some people some pickup lines like Olivia Rodrigo, which might have made me responsible for him and Camila Kabubu breaking up, but... Anyways, today I wanted to get into Instagram's Instagram account to, I don't know, post a picture of myself or something. And then I remember the guy who owns Instagram is Mark Zuckerberg. So when I tried logging in with a bunch of different passwords and none were working, I realized they kept asking me if I'm not a robot. And since old Marky Poo is a robot, I left it blank and then boom, I was in, baby. And I was stressed about what I should post to like 400 million people. So I just chose this random picture of me at the beach and now half a million people have liked it. So thank you, Mark Zuckerberg, for the validation. I love ripping hairs off my lice-infested head and burning them over top of a Bath & Body Works candle. Because I am so bored from quarantine because unlike some people, cough, cough. No, literally, cough, cough. I haven't been going to social gatherings, and I've been staying home letting random things on fire to pass the time. But anyways, I looked down and realized the two and a half muscles I used to have are all gone, and now my pants are even tighter, and that is so completely normal and all right. Did you think I was gonna get mad at myself? This year is such an L that the alphabet ends after L. There's no M-N-O-P. Anyways, I still felt like a human blobfish. I needed a self-esteem booster, baby. So I did three sit-ups and waited for the apps to come and I waited like 10 minutes and they still weren't there, but I forced myself to take some shirtless pictures. And then I was gonna post them on Instagram, but then I got scared and deleted them because I have a huge fear of my nipples being on the internet. But then I said YOLO and posted them. So if you want to see them, my Instagram is Ben of the Week. <laughs> Today, I snuck an AirTag tracking device into an Ed Sheeran concert so that I could somehow stick it onto him to track him down because that's for the FBI. No. Anyways, randomly, BTS opened for him and then Eddie was about to come on stage. So I had the genius idea to use an extra mask and fashion it into a slingshot so that when he performed, I walked up to the front of the stage, locked onto my target, and bam, it flew through the air. And now I know there's no way of it sticking to him. However, they have to pack up the stage and it's probably going to travel with him. So anyways, I saw Doja Cat and Lil Nas X and then left the concert concert and went home. Then the next morning, I was getting a reading on the AirTag Finder, and it said that he was in Las Vegas. So I flew to Las Vegas, and when I got to the airport, I thought I had already found him, but the thing is, I had a little bit of spicy grape juice on the plane. So I stumbled over to the man and shouted, Ed! And it was just a random man. So, um, yeah. I woke up this morning and checked the calendar and remembered, oh, it's my birthday. And then I checked the mail and no one sent me anything and not even like a letter. And half my friends forgot to wish me happy birthday, but it's okay. There's no time for self-pity because I'm going to get myself a present. So I grabbed my laptop and I went on Louis Vuitton's website and I looked for the most expensive thing that they have for sale. And it turns out they sell an artichoke looking chair for $103,000. So I added it to my cart and then it asked me to pay for it. So I typed in one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and then 420 for the expired date and 
six, six, six. For the security code. And like a minute later, I got a confirmation email. And then right after that, the doorbell rang. So I ran downstairs and there was a bunch of boxes. And I started screaming because someone out there is going to get charged $100,000. So anyways, I'm not having a party because of COVID. So if you can think of any other way to celebrate, please let me know. Because for now, I'm just sitting in my artichoke chair, eating a mashed potato bowl and watching my mantis for hours on end. Okay, here's how I finesse my way onto the red carpet at the MTV Movie Awards. So I got invited and flown out to LA and went straight to the awards venue, but I was a day early and they were still setting up, but it was so cool. And they have signs for where every celebrity would sit. And that's when I saw my twin, Noah Centineo's chair. I sat in his seat, so Noah and I have officially touched our butts on the same chair. Oh, and I saw Bozzy's too. Then I went outside and they were rolling out the red carpet and setting up giant popcorn tubs made of gold. And then I walked down it. I don't know why I looked like that. But then the next day was the awards and I was so nervous to go on the red carpet, but I got over my anxiety, which was skyrocketing. And I got my picture taken and I looked so awkward. Why did I smile like Debbie Ryan and then just walk away? So then I wandered around the red carpet, walking past actors that I've literally looked up to for years. I don't know who let me act like this, but I look like a rat that got hit by a train. But then the show was starting. So I went inside and I found my seat and there was this really, really yummy popcorn. And then Dwayne the freaking Rock Johnson did a performance then walked right past me. And then Lizzo did too and walked right past me again. And then I really had to pee. So I went inside, but then when I went back in, they were already filming and I walked in front of the camera. <laughs> we're out of time, but I vlogged the whole thing. If you want to go see it, the link to my YouTube is in my bio. So I was busy trying to carbonate milk with my mom's soda stream and make milk soda when my friend who lives in a different city texts me, come here now. I get really scared when people send a text and end it with a period. So naturally I ignored the text and laid in bed and stressed about it until 30 minutes later when they texted me again. I checked the text and it said, it's an emergency. And I was like, uh, emergency? It's emergency. Just like call 911 or something. But then I thought, uh, maybe they're like hamster died or something. So I got up, got all the way in my car, turned on some Harry Styles. But then after 20 minutes of driving, I had to pull over because I was crying too hard. <laughs> to feel better, I switched on Crazy Frog. What's going on on bum, 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 bum. Sometimes when I listen to a really good song in the car, I kind of lose track of how fast I'm going. So while I was in the middle of vibing, um, I saw flashing lights behind me. But then I remembered getting arrested is a choice. And today I choose not to be arrested. <laughs> so it turns out that's actually not my choice, but I didn't get these really cool mugshot pictures out of it. You should totally go check them out on my Instagram. It's at Ben of the Week. And comment Crazy Frog if you came from this TikTok. Okay, love you, bye. Me and my 80-year-old neighbor Myrtle have been leaving each other messages through our windows to stay entertained during quarantine. That's until yesterday when she wrote a very threatening sign. I know she's an old lady, but that made my anxiety go ding, 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 ding. When I went downstairs, the door was open, like she said, and there was a box. But then my ADHD distracted me, and I started thinking, why did Marty Rich name a song The Box? Is he like just rapping about a box? Did he order a Snap out of it, Ben. You potentially have an elderly intruder in your house. She could like bite me with her dentures or something and give me corona. I took the box and screamed, leave me alone, Myrtle. And then went to go make my final sign. I placed it in my window where I knew she would see it. Here's a fun Ben fact. I'm an expert in archery, and I'm not afraid to turn her into Myrtle on a stick. I felt prepared, but all I could do now was wait around for Myrtle to make her move, but I got curious and decided to check out the box. It could have been booby trapped, ha, <laughs> booby, for all I know, but I opened it anyways, and it turns out it was cookies. She baked me cookies. My sleep paralysis demon woke me up last night, but like, I'm not scared of demons. In fact, I'm so bored and lonely that I've tried everything to get them to haunt me so I can have a friend. Like last week, I performed a ritual on my kitchen floor and tried to summon the ghost of Ja, but all he did was say, hey, and then knocked a book on my head. Not even evil spirits want me. Then I thought maybe if I make them angry, they'll visit me. So I used a Ouija board to call the spirits in my house ugly and fat. Then I poured up some shots of holy water. But that's when my video doorbell showed something terrifying. My front door swung open and I felt a cold breeze and it gave me goosebumps. Well, ah, I meant the other kind of goosebumps. I was on the ground, but when I looked up, I saw I had summoned the ghost of Chef Gusteau from Ratatouille. My kitchen lit up with cooking and light as he told me anyone can cook. There was a pot of something yummy boiling. I said, Chef Gusteau, what are we cooking? And he said, when was the last time you saw your dog? <laughs> ah! It was just a dream. Today, I'm giving $10,000 to the employees at my local Taco Bell. I pulled up to the window and said, Hi, can I get a bean burrito, please? When I pulled up to the window, they gave me the burrito and I gave them... $2. What do I look like, Mr. Beast? Plus, this box has $30 in it max. Just some Minecraft plush toys and a card if I ever went missing as a child. But then, as I was eating my Taco Bell burrito, I started feeling bad. Maybe the Taco Bell employees have little Taco Bell babies at home that need little Taco Bell diapers or they'll shed their little Taco Bell tears. And I thought, I may not have $10,000, but I can show them I appreciate them. I went home, grabbed some markers, and decided to write a little card telling them how much I appreciate them on being on the front lines of this pandemic and everything. I also thought to add a little something else, since this is already a TikTok, for every 100k 
likes this video gets, I'll add $10 to the card, up to $100, because I really do not be Mr. Beast. <laughs> I finished the card with some drawings of tacos, because I love tacos. And tonight, I'll head over to Taco Bell and drop it off. I'll see you in part two tomorrow. Last weekend, me and some pals and Mr. Beast gathered around to sacrifice a giant minion for fun. But after we killed it to death, I was like, now what? And Mr. Beast said, Dave is finally dead. So is this stupid trend. But I thought to myself, that's kind of awkward because to me, it wasn't a trend. And I got a giant minion tramp stamp tattoo a few days before. And I was so embarrassed that I got in my car and drove around looking for a laser tattoo removal place. But the only one that I could find in my town went out of business when they accidentally cut someone's leg off. And it also looks like the back room. So I ordered a tattoo laser gun off of Sheehan. And when it arrived a week later, I got ready to use it after accidentally burning a hole in my eyeball but i reached behind me and started burning it off and it smelled like burnt chicken for about an hour but i thought it was essentially gone until i was at walmart a week later when i saw this lady drop her toe fungus medication and when i bent down to pick it up for her the scar popped out and she screamed and thought i had monkey pox and i was like shut the hell up wordy ass bitch. let's see those toes you need this cream for Today, I made a DIY North Korean driver's license by taking a picture with my iPad, and then I googled North Korean IDs and slapped my face on it. And I made it look all pretty by crossing this guy's name off and giving myself a fake name. But I didn't do this so I can get into a club or anything. I did it so that every day I can print a new one and change my birthday to today's date so I can get free stuff every single day like a Starbucks drink or make people be nice to me. Anyways, I first tested my ID at Olive Garden and the waiter got the whole restaurant singing happy birthday to me. But more importantly, I got a big old cannoli for free, baby. Anyways, next I went to Cheesecake Factory and I showed my waitress my ID thinking she would give me, I don't know, a cheesecake slice at Cheesecake Factory. But when she came to the table, she had all these cheesecake slices and what did she give me? A bowl of berries. And I was like, oh, okay, I guess. But then she dropped the bill off and charged me $8 for the strawberries. When all I wanted was a slice of cheesecake for free because they're like $10. So basically fake uh, North Korean IDs don't work at Cheesecake Factory. Hey there, you remember those crazy people from the math equations like Richard buys 78 watermelons, or Karen buys 32 crates of toilet paper. Do you realize how dumb you look doing that? Are you stupid? It's not like people are double pooping all of a sudden. There would have been enough toilet paper to go around, but now, and I mean this so literally, we are in deep shit. Today, I decided to make a Cheeto burrito to celebrate that orange creepo getting voted out by 73,751,136 sexy, gorgeous, beautiful people. Anyways, I had some Tostitos and I was gonna make a Sofrito burrito because I love the food of Latinos, but I couldn't because I had no tortilla and I could order Taco Bell, but it would give me diarrhea. So I grabbed my shoes off the floor and I walked out the door and I checked how many miles it was to the store and my phone said four and it was such a bore and a chore because I hate the outdoors. But I finally arrived at about half past five and I got my tortilla and I was ready to thrive. But I didn't want to walk, I just wanted to drive. And as I was walking back, I dropped my tortilla and I started to cry and I screamed out why. But then I gave up and I went to Chipotle and why does nothing rhyme with Chipotle? Anyways, I got my burrito and added some Cheetos and then I went to Sleepo. I was making some pink sauce and pickles pasta and wanted some seasoning as a finishing touch. But I accidentally grabbed a jar of catnip thinking it was oregano and, and didn't notice until I woke up from a nap to meowing outside my window. And when I opened the door, I saw 40 cats outside my house and I thought it was the greatest day of my life until I met this musty stray who smelled like Fritos and he showed me this really cool trick called bite. And I thought, well, now I have rabies. So I scrambled to find someone to pee on the wound to neutralize it. But after that didn't work, I realized that's what you do for a jellyfish thing and not rabies. So I went to the pharmacy to see if I could find some medication for the bite, but I'm in Japan, so I just translated some medications and found this one that Google Translate says was rabies control. So I took it, and after a couple hours, my stomach started growing, and I realized it was babies control. And I was like, oh my god, the birth control malfunction made me fucking pregnant. Nah, I'm not pregnant, I just gained 10 pounds, because... Today I went to the fair so I could try and go on that tilt-a-whirl ride that was about to collapse in this TikTok that I saw. But when we were standing in line for it, I noticed some sparks flies that flew by and a literal screw had been sharded out. And I was like, well, the Juice World concert's gonna be really good after this. Anyways, we got on and found our seats and put the thing on. And I don't know what they did, but they had cranked that speed up to the max. And you know what? It surprisingly didn't fall apart, but instead I just passed out like a little infant that can't stay awake. Anyways, I got off and was feeling kind of hungry. And I saw the cotton candy booth, so I went over to it. And they gave some to us for free because they were so nice. And I was enjoying my cotton candy when my friends dragged me onto this swingy thingy. So I reluctantly gave the dude my ticket and found my seat. And once it started moving, I realized that cotton candy and motion sickness is a terrible mix. They were swinging our butts around this thing like no tomorrow, baby. Because I threw up. And it sprayed on a worker.
and I'm never allowed. I was shooting tapioca balls for my boba tea at strangers on the street when I saw a weird light flash out of the corner of my eye. And I'm in an Airbnb and I always hear about them having secret cameras to spy on people. So I started getting anxious and I looked around to try and find the camera and I peeked in the toaster oven and I saw the flash to my right. So I looked through some decorative grass thinking it could be in there, but all I found was a cute little mini red croc keychain. So I put it on my backpack because it's kind of cute. And that's when across the street in the parkade, I saw a flash go off and I realized it's the paparazzi. I can't go anywhere without them showing up. Hey, yo, Ben of the week. Is it true that you have zero friends and no one likes you and you smell like a waste processing facility? <laughs> Anyways, the made-up situation in my head made me cry myself to sleep in the bathtub and when I woke up I went into the kitchen to grab some seaweed for breakfast. When I remember that my camera is my security camera to watch me while I'm locked up in the loony bin and I'm not in an Airbnb I'm locked up. Hi, my name is Ben and I've lost my grasp on reality. I was sticking sticky pickles to walls in case a fickle old man walking by saw a nickel. He tripped on a loaf of pumpernickel reaching for the nickel and got himself in a pickle. But as he wiggled on the ground he saw a fickle trickle of pickle juice run down the wall and could wiggle towards the pickle and have himself a little nibble, giving him the energy to run as fast as a missile. But along the way, he jiggled because, uh, the man in this riddle ate too many Skittles. And should stick to just eating a little pickle as a snack so that his health isn't crippled, ending him up in the hospital. Anyways, the man went home after being saved by the pickle and wiggled into his simple yet fiscal home and sat on his brittle chair to relax and whistle and play the fiddle and enjoy a giggle while eating his peanut brittle and maybe even a Skittle. But he got bored and turned on WAP and little by little, he wiggled and jiggled and made that old booty dribble. I haven't been posting on TikTok because I got a stalker that's been DMing me saying he's going to come to my house and that he knows my address. And I didn't know what to do, so I packed my bags and I ran away to Florida to try and hide. When I finally got there, I went to the pool to relax when I saw someone staring at me from a distance covered in, like, smoke or something. I was kind of scared, but I followed them out of the pool and I barely got out because I have no upper body strength. <clears throat> anyways, I followed his footsteps to the beach and they led me to this fenced-off area, but I went in anyways and I followed the trail of smoke coming from him, which brought me to this weird abandoned building which had a really strong Strong smell of like skunk or something coming from it. I was still curious, so I stuck inside and it was completely dark. So I turned on my flash and there was Jacob Sartorius! I screamed out, what do you want from me? And that's when he asked if I wanted to do some lettuce with him. And you know what I said? Yes! And we made a delicious salad together. Just me and Jacob Sartorius, two dudes tossing salad in the kitchen. So I don't know if you saw, but Little Nos X released these new Nike shoes that have a drop of real human blood in them. But I thought the colors were cute, so I ordered a pair of them. And while I was waiting around for them to arrive, I saw a lot of Karens were mad about it. And I was trying to figure out why, because having spare human blood on you at all times would be so helpful. Like if I was ever, I don't know, walking back from Taco Bell and a Toyota Prius smashes into me. And I'm lying on the ground like, dang, this is kind of awkward. Also, I'd probably be dying and need a blood transfusion. In that moment, I could just pop my shoe off and use my shoe shoe blood and be completely fine. Then I could grab my food that I dropped from being hit by a car and find a nice bench to eat my taco on. Until I realize I'm currently on church property and I'm wearing my Lil Nas X Satan shoes and uh oh. Today I made a fake plane ticket with my DIY skills so I could go to the Tokyo Olympics because I think I'm really good at gymnastics. But the problem is Japan is only letting actual Olympic athletes go there because of COVID. So I finessed the system by buying a random plane ticket to Alabama so I could get into the airport. So once I got to the airport, I found the flight that was headed to Tokyo. And then I walked over to the gate to sit down and I crossed off Alabama on my ticket. And then I used it while they were boarding and I managed to board the flight to Tokyo. And after I took my seat, I was just sitting there realizing I'm really going to Japan, huh? And then we took off and I was enjoying the flight until I looked at the safety manual and saw that I was on one of those malfunctioning Boeing 737 MAX planes. You know, the ones that decide they want to be a car while in midair. And that's when I started feeling really bad turbulence. And then I remembered my phone wasn't on airplane mode. And then that's when it got really bad because the plane started falling apart. And all of a sudden, the oxygen mask came down and I just accepted that the last song I'll have ever listened to in my life was Ed Sheeran. Anyways, the crowd was getting closer and closer. And oh, I actually just fell asleep. <laughs> Anyways, um, now I'm in Tokyo. Um... I was enjoying some fresh strawberries when my doorbell rang. I wasn't expecting anyone, but I went and answered the door anyways. No one was there, but whoever rang the doorbell had left an egg. It was covered in blue speckles and it was warm. But I decided right then and there, I'm going to care for this egg until it hatches and be a bird dad. I made a little house for it by grabbing a box and putting grass in it. Then I set up a heat lamp so the egg root would be nice and toasty. But I was getting bored of waiting for him to hatch, so I decided to take him on a walk. Well, it was more of a roll. I taught Egbert how to skate and showed him to my dog, but then she tried to eat him. And I was like, after a week, my son started to get an attitude. He would just roll away from me when I was talking to him and then go play Fortnite all day. But then one day we started arguing because the place was a chicken coop. And I got so mad, I stormed off. I started feel bad, so I went to go say sorry, but he was gone. I ran outside, and I looked everywhere for him. I checked the patio, I went and looked in the garden. I was starting to freak out when... <laughs> Egbert? <laughs> I was 
was walking my dog to the park when I looked down and realized my dog looks a little weird. Then I remembered I sold my dog for a gay chicken. That was not the park. I was at the zoo and there were water chickens and tall deer and beefy dogs and oh my god, the gay chicken is running away. I jumped into the camel pen and started showing off and I was scared to get hurt so I snuck through the barbed wire fence only to find a wild boar right next to me and I thought he was chill until he started charging at me. So I escaped into the butterfly room and then I snuck through an employee's only door and I thought I was safe but standing right there was a zoo guard and then he chased me into the parking lot because I guess I was trespassing. After running for an hour, I saw a lime scooter so I hopped on it and zoomed away but then there was an entire flock of long chickens blocking away so I zoomed in the other direction and that is when I crashed into a rock. When I woke up, I was speaking in Minecraft enchantment table, but I still got my gay chicken though. So it's finally springtime, which means I've been growing flowers, succulents, and weed. No, 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 I meant like I'm growing like dandelions, like weeds. Oh, God. anyways, I really wanted a sausage tree. They're going Africa. It's a real thing. Look it up. So I looked online and saw someone was selling seeds for a sausage tree. The guy selling it was named Daniel, and he said he'd give me some for free. Free sausage! But he did say not to bring my phone or tell anyone where I was going. And I was like, okay, we can't have anyone knowing that I have a non-native plant species. So I smashed my phone with a weight and drove over to Daniel's house. The house looked a little bit creepy, but I parked and walked up to it, and the door was wide open. So I walked in, and he had told me, come upstairs, first bedroom on the right. I was like, okay. So I slowly opened the door, walked in, and there were the seeds. I could finally grow my own sausage tree. I was so freaking excited. So I went to go exit the door, and uh, it was locked. Tonight on Where'd That Ho Go? He's been gone for 13 years now. Please, if you have any information, we miss him so much. Last night, I got all ready to go hang out with people. On Omegle, silly. Apparently, random strangers will give you free sausages on that website. And I'm like, I love sausages. Hot dogs, jambalaya, you name it. I went to the fridge and grabbed my ketchup and my mustard, and then I logged on to Omegle.com. The first dude I saw kind of looked like my uncle. I said, hi, what's your name? He said, I'm Rajesh. And then I told him my name. After that, he asked for my address and for me to show my driver's license and my credit card. I thought it was so cool that he wanted to get to know me. But then I reminded myself, Ben, what? What do you want here for? I told Rajesh, I'm ready for the free sausage. I have my condiments. Oh, and that's when I realized it's the other kind of sausage. If you want to see what happened next, the YouTube link is in my bio. So I was watching my local 7-Eleven burn down today when I saw a shirt or something in the bushes. And when I walked over, I saw it was a Walmart employee uniform that someone just left there. So I decided to try it on, even though it had a stain on it that looked like, um, milk. <laughs> but that's when I got the idea to go to Walmart and see how long it would take them to notice that I don't work there. And I was just walking around in Walmart as a fellow employee. So the first thing I did was give myself a good employee discount on a few things I found. And then I was looking for something to do when I saw the phone for announcements just sitting Sitting there. And I was super nervous, but I picked it up and said, Attention shoppers, everything is free for the next hour. And then I hung up and panicked and tried to find a getaway. And I saw the employees only area. So I went inside and it led me to an elevator, which eventually led me out the main entrance. And when I finally made it out of there, the security was outside with its flashing lights. So I quickly took off my uniform, threw it in the bushes, and since it's now 2021, that means that the Global Panda Express is officially over. Oh, wait, I was just kidding. I meant the global pandemic is officially over. Now you might be thinking, how is that possible? Well, two weeks ago, I cured coronavirus by filling a bottle rocket with hand sanitizer, and I sent it into the atmosphere. And for the past two weeks, the hand sanitizer has been spraying into the air, and people all around the world have been breathing in my vaccine air. Now, to test my theory, I decided today to see if I can find any pesky COVID germs lying around. So I went to the gas station and I licked the debit keypad and then I licked my fingers after typing in my pin, which is one, two, three, four. And then after that, I went to Panda Express and I enjoyed some yummy shrimp. But when I was driving home, I felt the COVID-21 germs from licking the gas station keypad bubbling in my stomach and I went home and I fell into my bed and I started coughing when all of a sudden I coughed up a piece of Lego, but I kept coughing and eventually I had enough Lego pieces in a little Lego house. So maybe COVID-21 isn't that bad. So my dad loves mangoes, so for Christmas, I got him a single mango from Walmart as his Christmas present. But I couldn't just wrap it, because it would be obvious that I got him a mango like everyone else does for Christmas. So I grabbed my wrapping paper, and I wrapped it as something completely different, and then I put it under the tree. But a few weeks had passed, and it started to smell really bad, and when I checked it, the mango had molded! So I had to throw the whole freaking present out and wrap a brand new mango. But I had run out of wrapping paper, so I got in my car, and I drove back to Walmart, and I found a tube of basic wrapping paper. And then I pretended it was a sword, and I was swinging it around, but I accidentally killed a minion. Anyways, then I was bored in line, so I screamed into it like a horn, and I said, Arby's, we have the meat. Anyways, I got home, and I cut up the mango. I grabbed a random DVD case, and I put all the mango slices in it, but my dad's cat tried eating it. Ugh. And then I wrapped the Lego Star Wars for Xbox 360 disc case and put it under the tree. And when I woke up this morning on Christmas, I gave it to him. 
What? The I was sitting in a prison cell making some scrumptious bean soup with my toilet water because two weeks ago I really had to pee, but I was walking home from Taco Bell. My house was 30 minutes away. So I stumbled into what I thought was a park with a bunch of pretty stone blocks organized in rows like Minecraft. But it turned out I made lemonade on Michael Jackson's grave. And the groundskeeper saw me and told me they were going to sue me. And I told them, I don't know anyone named Sue. And I walked away. But then they forced me to go to court. And when I got to the stand to testify, they said I was going to get something called a felony. And I said, that's baloney. And then I pulled out my iPad pad and showed them my notes app apology because I'm a TikToker and I'm new to LA and I'm working to become a better person. But then they threw me in prison regardless. So if anyone wants a nice cup of bean water soup, uh, please mail me a Nintendo Switch so I can check on my villagers because I miss them very so much and dearly. Please, I'm so bored and lonely. So I had just finished dropping my uncle off at the local prison so he could turn himself in for burning down nine different Taco Bells. Anyways, I was driving home and I checked my mirror and caught a reflection of me and I remembered how much I don't like myself and I literally feel like I look like Donkey from Shrek and no one will ever truly really love me because no one will truly love me. Yeah, so it actually turns out that I was parked on a portal to hell that day. Anyways, I'm trying to get my car towed back from hell to earth. Wait a minute. How come I went to hell? I've only ever slapped like three babies. Okay, maybe four. Anyways, I had been on a journey. I was hungry like you would not believe, and I was really craving some Taco Bell until I remembered my uncle burned them all down. Last week, I got this crazy opportunity to be Ellen DeGeneres' personal assistant. And I was so excited because I love Ellen. And she flew me out all the way to LA for it. And when I arrived, she told me to come upstairs in her bedroom. So I put down my luggage and I brought her a cup of coffee. I slowly opened the door and there she was. I shook her hand and gave her the coffee and she looked at me breathing heavily. And I was like, wow, Ellen is so nice. And that's when she said, you forgot your mask. I remembered I wasn't wearing one and I freaked out and reached in my pocket to grab mine. And when I looked up, Ellen said, I never forget mine. And had her mask fashioned into a slingshot and catapulted an airbot in my face, knocking me over. And then she told me, I'm gonna eat you. <laughs> and she began to chase me around with a Gucci shoe. And when she finally got a hold of me, she dragged me by my hair into her car and told me to sit there and watch over it. And if anyone even looks at her Mustang, then I need to arrest them. All the doors were locked and I started to lose hope when I remembered Pennywise the Clown was scared of being not scary. And I know Ellen is scared of being not funny. So I chanted, Unfunny, unfunny, unfunny. Instantly, Ellen ceased to exist from the universe and I was free. Today, I ate 20. 23 gummy vitamins and I got the brilliant idea to go buy an ostrich so I can recreate that scene from the movie Rango where they ride the ostriches into the sunset. But then I was wondering to myself, are ostriches even legal? And I looked it up and yeah, you can literally own an ostrich in California. So I started calling places asking for ostriches. Yeah, help if I gave you a half used Starbucks gift card, could I buy an emu with it? No, you cannot. Anyways, I finally found a place three hours away called Ostrich Land, and I went on a little road trip. Now, as I was traveling to Ostrich Land, I thought about all the pets I've had so far, such as my crusty-eyed white dog, the grocery store crab that I ended up releasing into the ocean, slash accidentally sacrificing when the wave came and killed it, and my praying mantis that I fed cockroaches to every single night. Anyways, we finally arrived at Ostrich Land, and it turned out the ostriches are seven feet tall! I thought ostriches were like chicken size! Ah, crap, we're out of time on TikTok, but if you want to see me vlog my ostrich purchase, the link to the YouTube videos in my bio. This is me buying a live crab from the store and freeing it into the ocean. The guy at the store was like, you know how to cook this, right? And I was like, oh, we are not cooking Mr. Krabs. As I was walking, some dude yelled at me and I got scared. And then this guy was walking around with an iguana. I'm like, it's my day to have an exotic pet, buddy. Look at his cute little mouth moving. Aww. I took him to the Santa Monica Pier before I freed him. And that's when I saw this guy literally kick a pigeon. I hate it here. Now, crabs can live 24 hours outside of water. But I thought, let's just free him already. Then some cops were staring at me and I got scared. I picked him up and I run to the beach. And I laid him down gently on the sand. But he was barely moving. So I ran into the waves to try and get him in deeper so he could swim or something. But he took a bit of a tumble. So it wasn't looking good for Mr. Krabs. And I started crying. But then he started moving again and I thought it's now or never. I scooped Mr. Krabs up and I ran over to that water and I dropped him in that water ever so gently. Oh crap, we are out of time. Um, if you want to see the rest of the video, uh, the link is in my bio. I was chugging oat milk when I began to wonder how do they milk an oat? Or how do they milk almonds? Or like how do they milk cashews? Hey, that doesn't matter. I want to talk about something more important. Like why are guinea pigs called guinea pigs when they are neither in the pig family or from Papua New Guinea? I bet that the first rodent to be called a pig felt so bad and probably cried. Anyways, both are kept in cages and that makes me sad. I really want to sword fight someone before 
before I pass away. But like, I don't want to pass away sword fighting, you know? Like, imagine if whenever you had beef with someone, you just said YOLO and got on your horse and jousted at each other like a freaking knight. Anyways, they keep laying awake in the middle of the night thinking about how scientists have literally told us that the planet's dying, but like, everyone in the world is like, I don't care. <laughs> and keeps eating cows which fart so much that it created a hole in the ozone layer. So, you know what? We need to start canceling people for farting. I want to see TikTok room post people who get caught farting and then everyone unstands them. So I'm asking you, viewer of this TikTok, to expose someone for farting right now. Thank you. This is how I finesse my way backstage at a music festival in LA. The day started with me getting invited to Blueface's pool party to film a TikTok with him because he didn't know what TikTok was. And I didn't really know what to do, so I just busted down for 15 seconds while this man watched from the background. Then me and Blueface baby took a picture, and that's when they were like, do you want to come backstage at the BET Awards Festival tonight? And I was like, yeah. So we went to the venue, and security was like, you have to be 21. And I was like, well, I'm not. But then they let me in anyways, and I got to go through the back area where all the artists enter, and they brought us to the backstage part. But fun fact, you actually can't see that much from backstage. But what I did see back there was g Easy standing right in front of me the whole time. I didn't even notice until like 30 minutes in. And he was just there vibing, listening to the music. Anyways, then they let me go into the main area to watch the rest of the show from like a better view. And the vibes were so good. It was so freaking fun. I got to see so many people perform. And then I went home. But uh, thank you for watching my vlog. Love you. Bye. I was preparing my favorite salad made of lawn and croutons. When all of a sudden I got a tweet notification on my Stan account dedicated to Aiden Gallagher. You know the guy who does the... I throw the salad and grab my laptop to see that the Aiden Gallagher was going on Omegle to talk to his fans. I felt so excited because there's no one more comforting and down to earth and vibrant than Mr. Loud by Loaf. I needed to be prepared just in case I did actually get to talk to him. So I grabbed my keys, hopped in the car and drove to the store. And I ordered some bread to please the Loaf King. As I was purchasing my loaf, I realized the joke is kind of dead, but maybe, just maybe it'll be enough for him to notice me. I drove home, opened my computer and hopped on Omegle. I saw a lot of very terrifying things that'll probably give me trauma for years and i was just about to give up when oh my god oh my god oh my god <laughs> word of time but if you want to see if i met the real life loaf boy the link to these two videos in my bio I was enjoying a delicious cabbage snack when I got the idea, I'm gonna go make friends with random strangers on the internet. So I put my baby cabbage back in the fridge and went downstairs with my laptop and logged into Omegle. The first thing I saw was someone holding their ah! And then I met a mime that was copying everything I did and then another person showed their ah! So then I went upstairs into the bathroom to grab a tissue and pour dish soap on it to wash my eyes up from what I had just seen. And then I took the dish soap and made a prayer circle on the floor around me to cleanse my soul, but I slipped on the soap. Anyways, there was a lot of screaming and then I went back on Omegle and saw a freaking clown that scared the crap out of me and then I panicked some more until I decided to go back on one more time. That's when I got matched with someone who sounded really familiar. Like their voice sounded like some famous rapper. And I asked them, do I know you? But then they showed their face and it was We round out of time on TikTok. But the full video is on my YouTube channel. The link is in my bio. So my hair used to look like this. And today I got my first haircut in six months. That's not including cutting it whenever I had a mental breakdown during quarantine, wrapped myself in a garbage bag and chopped it all off. Anyways, I wanted to shave my head and look like yeah. Avatar the last airbender. So I got my Uber and headed to my hairdresser studio. I had to put on a robe so the hair doesn't get down your back, but I put it backwards because I'm stupid. And then this little fur baby walked up to me and gave Matzo's kisses. And well, I got too nervous to ask him for the avatar haircut, so I told him to just give me whatever would look best. So here's my new hairstyle. It's like a mix of space buns and linguini noodle bangs. I'm just kidding. Apparently that's how they part it when they cut it. Anyways, and then I had to go sit in the dome chair thing and then the haircut was complete. And I was too nervous to look, so I kept a hat on until I went home. And then when I got home, I went into my bathroom. I took off my hoodie and then I took off my hat and if you want to see the haircut reveal i just posted on my instagram and i kind of hate it so please hype me up <laughs> My legs have gotten so hairy that they look like a jungle in the middle of Madagascar and there's little monkeys swinging from the hairs like they're trees. Anyways, I decided today I'm gonna wax them because why not? Why can't I wax my legs if I want to? Why does toxic masculinity say the males can't wax their legs? Also, I want my legs to feel like two hot dog sausages so I can hop in bed and feel like I'm the wiener in a hot dog bun. Anyways, I went to the store and picked up some wax and Red Bull and the cashier said something like, I hope that's not for you, is it? And I just stood there and then I paid and I ran out of the store. And I got in my car and I drove home and I screamed out the anxiety. And then I sat down on my floor and began the process. I started feeling fear because what if the wax strip gets permanently stuck and chemically fuses to my skin and they have to amputate my legs? But then I slapped myself and remembered people wax their legs all the time. So I took the wax strips out and apparently you're supposed to rub it between your hands. So I did that and I got really hot. So I put it on my leg and <laughs> we're out of time on TikTok. But if you want to see me in pain, the link to the YouTube video is in my bio. 
So I was trying to make carbonated mayonnaise with my mom's soda stream. And although it splattered everywhere, I had the idea. What if I made a meal with every single expired thing in my house? There are children with no food starving somewhere. And if I can reduce my waste, well, they'll probably still be starving. But at least no food will be wasted. First, I grabbed an onion that's been sitting behind the toilet for some reason for five years. I chopped it up and cried because it's an onion. And then I smelled it and it smelled like Shrek's toast. So I threw up. I put the onion in a bowl and then I grabbed Aunt Jemima syrup. It expired three years ago, but Miss Jemima doesn't look a day over 60. I poured this syrup on the onions and then grabbed a bean curd snack and said it was expired, so I threw it in the bowl anyways. Then I grabbed a frozen glove of beans and tried to break it open, but I had to use a shovel and I ended up just cutting off a bean finger, but I wanted lots, so I just threw the whole thing in. And I finished it off with some chia seeds that expired in 1998. How did they not become chia trees yet? Then I threw it in the microwave, haha, <laughs> beans in the microwave, and I gave it 100 minutes. I tried eating it, but unsurprisingly, I threw up after mixing every rotten thing in my house together. Okay, love you, bye. I went to Universal Studios today, but when I got to security, I remembered I had a can of spray cheese in my bag, which you can't bring into parks or anything because it's an aerosol and they're probably scared that I'm gonna, I don't know, like burn down the Minions ride. So I took my bag and went into the alleyway and wrapped it in the label for my Febreze can that I use as deodorant from time to time. And guess what, baby? They never found it when they searched my bag. So anyways, I went on the Minions ride and as much as I would have loved to set it on fire until it's nothing but smoldering ruins, I had to settle for beating up the Minion in the gift shop. But anyways, after the ride, I realized I was pretty hungry and I wasn't gonna spend 20 dollars on harry potter butter beer when i can just put butter in my beer myself so i snuck into the employees only area to eat my spray cheese and i thought i grabbed the right can when i sprayed it in my mouth but i accidentally grabbed the febreze and basically blinded myself so i asked siri call poison control and she was like calling animal control and i was like what no! and animal control was like hello yes what are you reporting and i was like my eyes are burning and they said your ass is burning we recommend pepto bismo and i knew they weren't gonna help so i hung up and i made the hard decision to flush my eyes with I was watching my comfort movie Pitch Perfect on HBO Max for the seventh time today because it's the only thing that makes me feel alive. But then as I was watching it, I got the idea that since I'm a talentless blob of bones and skin, I should learn how to play the cups. So I grabbed a bunch of wine glasses to spice it up and I invented the glass song and I spent days studying Pitch Perfect on HBO Max perfecting my talent so that I could get so good so I could perform for the world to see. So I started to print out flyers and then I went to the first stop of my glass song world tour in Paris. And when I got there, I stuck flyers everywhere to really get the word out about my show. Show. But then as I was doing my sound checks on the day of my performance, I got a little too carried away and... So anyways, I'm just gonna stick to watching Pitch Perfect on HBO Max and you should do. I don't usually do this, but I'm about to drag some children on the internet, okay? So three months ago, I was walking my dog home when I heard my name get called behind me. And when I got home, I was ding-dong ditched by these children, okay? Now usually I'd be like, a ding-dong ditch, whatever, except this happened. And these human dung beetles aren't like you guys. Like, you guys actually watch my videos. Look at this! That is them literally trying to figure out what my name is. And in a moment of frustration, I put this on my story. To the rodent children that keep ringing my doorbell asking if Ben of the Week lives here, can y'all go play Fortnite or something? <laughs> and then their mom DM'd me! To those rodent children will not be ringing your doorbell anymore! Please delete their pictures as of- <laughs> I took it one step further. For musty rodent children at home watching my story on their leaked frog tablet. <laughs> Anyways, please respect my privacy or I will call you a rodent online and get your Xbox taken away. Hiya, here's your food. Thanks, dude. Um, you didn't take- Oh, uh, I only have $2. Oh, you know what I have? Your address. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah. Um... Yeah, I can literally, like, take you out. <laughs> Wait, what? Um, does your family live here? Uh, yeah. Uh, why? Oh, sweet. Uh, my uncle actually eats families. <laughs> oh, um... <laughs> Crap, what, uh, what kind of sauce do you want? Oh, I didn't order any sauce. <laughs> okay, well, will barbecue work when my uncle eats your family? <laughs> oh, dude, I think you have a gas leak in your house. Wait, like, for real? Yeah, can I go check it out for you? Oh, right, yeah, for sure, come on in. Okay, sick. Okay, so, uh, the kitchen's right here if you want to check it there. Hmm. Well, like, are you able to find it? Oh. I know exactly where it is. <coughs> hey, I ordered vegan taquitos. Is there cheese in this? Why, yes, there is. <laughs> um, I'm lactose intolerant. And you're the gas leak. <laughs> Today I woke up and grabbed my phone to text my friends good morning bestie, but instead I chose violence today. And out of the blue I snapchatted my friend, I know what you did. And then I had added her on snapchat because I wanted to see her anger level. Then I put my phone away and I went upstairs to make lunch. And while I was getting the ingredients to make some delicious chocolate nachos, my phone started blowing up, but I didn't look at them because I was microwaving my chocolate nachos. And then once the nachos were done, I sat down and I enjoyed them. And then I went to the sink and I washed my plate and then I decided it was a good time 
time to assess her anger level. So I checked my phone and she had said, Yeah, I told everyone you're an ugly ass, annoying ass, smelly, especially smelly ass bitch with a dog that looks like a raw chicken breast that you could boil and use the eye crust as seasoning. Loot my number. So anyways, um, I don't have my best friend anymore and I'm going back to bed. So I was completely legally watching a movie today when I won an iPhone 13. And all I had to do was enter my social security number. So I typed it in. And then a week later, while I was blending my candles together to make a mega candle, I got a notification that a package was delivered. So I ran downstairs to grab it, and the packaging was a little strange, but I cracked open the box, which apparently was for the iPhone 14. And then when I opened up that box, they had sent me a toy car. And I was like, I know I didn't just give away my identity for a Hot Wheel. Then I realized it's actually a phone. So I decided to hang up on the 911 one operator that I had panic called and I checked out my new phone and it was pretty cool until I realized it was a used phone and I think the previous owner was someone's grandma because I saw in her text she wasn't just having booty calls but a whole booty conference now I didn't want this phone anymore after going into the images and seeing granny's milkies so I picked it up one last time and checked her contact section and noticed she had her address on there so I grabbed the phone and biked over to her house which happened to be only an hour away and when I got there um granny is on her Jeff Bezos type B. So I decided to put my name in her contacts and then I threw the phone over the fence and I'll let you know if I slide. Today I'm surprising my mom with cooked snails for dinner. But these aren't normal snails. These are from the dollar store. So I had all the ingredients to make into a pasta dish. So I opened up the can of snails and... <laughs> I got snail juice in my eye. So those are my nasty, smelly snails, and I put them in a bowl when I started on the pasta. We got noodles, t tarragon, and pasta sauce, baby. I boiled some water and spilled half the pasta while it went in. And then it started boiling over, and I was panicking. But then I was draining it, and three noodles were getting stuck, and I was getting mad. Next, we were mincing garlic for the escargot, and it looked like little mini garlic noodles, love. Then I put it all together with the snails, garlic, blue cheese, tarragon, and threw her in the oven. I felt like Remy from Ratatouille, baby. Minus being the chef, I just felt like the rat. Then my mom got home. It's almost dinner time. Smells good. Guess what it is? It smells like some sort of garlicky wine sauce. Okay, but there's something else added. The link is in the bio if you want to see or get surprised with snails. So I've always wondered, what would happen if you put a Tide Pod in your dishwasher instead of like the dish soap pod thing? Like, would it explode or like what would happen? So today I decided to sacrifice my Android phone to record it. And I turned the flash on and put it in my dishwasher. And then once it was recording inside there, I closed it up and started the dishwasher on the low cycle. But after a few minutes, it started shaking a lot. And I noticed that there was water leaking and dripping out the bottom. So I panicked and I canceled it and I opened it up. And I took the phone out and somehow it survived and was still working. So I played the video to see what happened and... Every time you're not running, Ed Sheeran gets closer. So I keep seeing new TikTok houses popping up, and I realized, wait a minute, I live in a house, and I have TikTok. I could make a TikTok house. First things first, I needed to name the house. So I thought, I'll close my eyes, spin in a circle, and the first thing I see when I open them, I'll name it. Okay, so I passed out because I got too dizzy, but when my eyes opened, I saw a piece of chocolate. I thought, oh, the Coco house, that's cute. But as my eyes focused, I realized it was actually my dog's doo-doo. But then I had the idea, the doo-doo house. I started cleaning up so it didn't look like I was filming TikToks in a dumpster. I shoveled the sidewalk so that no and slips and breaks their neck while throwing it back to Savage. Then I checked to see if there were towels so that all the stinky TikTokers can shower. But then I remembered I ran out of toilet paper weeks ago and I've been using... Anyways, finally, it was time to recruit people. I DM'd over 50 celebrities, TikTokers, YouTubers. I even told the girl who sings Dance Monkey that she's banned from the doo-doo house and she literally replied. <laughs> I waited 24 hours to see who would reply and if you want to see everyone that's now a part of the doo-doo house, the link is in my bio. Hi, my name's Ben, I'm 20, and I've never swallowed a pill in my entire life. Cause they make me throw up. But I'm anemic and I need pills or I'll pass out. And so far, I've just been chewing my iron pills, but they taste like an iPhone 5 battery. So today, I'm gonna learn how to swallow pills. Now, I don't have any actual pills, so I drove to 7-Eleven and got some Tic Tacs. So welcome to me making a TikTok about swallowing Tic Tacs for TikTok. Now that I had some Tic Tacs, I went to an abandoned street to practice swallowing them because I don't want to throw up on my floor. And it went like this. <laughs> I was on my very last pill and I had just upchucked the last 199 Tic Tacs, so this had to be the one. Otherwise, if I'm ever having a medical emergency because I'm having a Nerf battle and I choke on a Nerf bullet and it puts me into a coma and the doctor's like, take this pill, I'll be able to. So I put the pill on my mouth and oh my god. Ah! We're out of time on here, but if you want to see if I finally swallowed it or not, the link to the YouTube video is in my bio. So I keep seeing people get canceled and I thought it's only a matter of time before I get canceled because I've said the N in autumn or the word column or the word damn is so useless. Like, what's the point of silent letters? You know what should be silent? People who are racist, transphobic, and homophobic. Ben, are you filming a serious video? Yeah, so... <laughs> 
Okay, um, when you have a platform, you have a responsibility to not spread or normalize things that can potentially hurt people. It's not like people are more sensitive these days. People are just no longer tolerating words or actions that have always hurt them. If I could motivate you guys to do one thing, it would be to educate yourself on issues that you may never face in your life, but other people unfortunately have to live with every single day, depending on who they are, who they love, who they pray to, or a number of other factors. Now, I do believe that when people make a mistake, tearing them apart and bullying them is such a wasted opportunity when you can show them and especially others how they can be a better person and learn from their mistakes at the end of the day please just be kind to every person that you meet have a good day so i was trying to buy a tiger online so that my dog could have a little friend to play with and i found one for five dollars i thought in my head this is such a great deal it sounds so legitimate the dude selling it was named barbara and he sent me a picture of a shipping container with his address and saying might my hair winker face i was like uh what a welcoming and sweet dude i told barbara okay and i went outside and hopped to my car looked at my reflection and scared myself put my seatbelt on of course and then drove eight hours to go to his container house i only crashed into one lane <laughs> When I got there, I could hear circus music playing from the inside. I got out of my car and slowly approached the container. It kind of smelled like something rotting, but I really wanted my $5 tiger. I was about to go in, but guys, come on. Do you really think I'd do that? We have to social distance. So I'm waiting until after the pandemic to meet up with an unknown man named Barbara to buy a tiger from him for $5. I was trying to sell my kidneys on the black market when I got an ad for Shein Eats, and apparently they sell food now. So I ordered some Mexican food because I was really hungry. But when it arrived, it came in what looked like a reused tissue box, and it had a fragile sticker, but it was looking more like a burrito bowl at this point. Anyways, I compared it to the picture in the ad, and it looked nothing like it. But the worst part is there was corn in it, and I'm allergic. And I was beyond mad, so I looked at the shipping label, and it said it was shipped all the way from China. So you know what I did? I was on that next flight to China, and after I boarded the plane next to the world's biggest Facebook mom with this suitcase, the food was actually pretty good, a little bit better than Shein's. But anyways, when I landed, I remembered it was the Olympics here in Beijing, so I decided to go to that instead of getting revenge on Shein. Happy Valentine's Day. Oh, hi. Here are some things from elementary school that you definitely forgot existed. I think these things were called pennies, but they smell like penis because they were never washed. Everyone who did this to their erasers are in jail now. These would always take me at least an hour to do but the person sitting next to me had it done in a minute flat these chairs right here were so staticky they had a longer battery life than an iphone 10. you have not known pain until you run your finger over with one of these Today I went to the movie theater an hour early because I'm half Caucasian and I wanted to see the new Spider-Man for the 30th time. But when I sat down, I noticed that they had QR codes for their overpriced food menus. So I got the intrusive thought to quickly run home and change all the QR codes to moaning sounds. So when I got home, I designed a bunch of fake stickers and printed them off with QR codes. So when you scan them, they play this. Anyways, I grabbed the stickers and drove back to the theater and stuck them over the top of the original ones. And as people trickled into the theater and the movie started, and they started scanning the codes for the menu, I suddenly began to hear... And then people would quickly hide their phones and try and turn it off. And it got to the point where they had to stop the movie. So anyways, I left and went for sushi. And when I got there and sat at the table, I noticed that this restaurant also has QR codes for their menu. And I had some stickers left over, so I carefully placed them on top of the old QR codes. And then I looked back at the dude behind me as he scanned his and... Anyways, my sushi was very delicious. 9 out of 10. You may be wondering why I was trying to collect booty pebbles. That is because I took a trip in the middle of the coronavirus pandemic. But then I realized online today was opposite day and I need to get as many germs in my system as possible to stay healthy. I went to the bathroom and filled up my water bottle with toilet water and then made sure to give the toilet bowl a lick. Matia tease. I even licked the airplane bathroom. But then as I was playing Roblox, my browser refreshed and it turns out opposite day was January 25th and I had just given myself 14 different diseases. My dearest Mima once told me, the circle of life is everywhere. That's why today I'm using her ashes to season my baked salmon for supper. I get all my seafood fresh from the sewer drain behind my local prison, because my uncle taught me when I was a young boy that if you take headphones with a phone attached playing Ed Sheeran and leave them by a sewer drain overnight, the fish in the sewers will sewer side. And when you check back the next day, you'll have plenty of fish ready for the lunch. Now, I'm not using any seasoning other than Mima herself, because I'm half white and my Mima told me that seasoning is the devil. Plus, the fish is already marinated in toxic chemicals to give it a little bit of a kick from the sewer runoff. I throw it in the oven at 400 degrees, and once it's done and I take it out, I finish it with a few more ashes. And then I finally take my first bite. <laughs> <laughs> so it looks like I have Mima stuck in my throat from the dryness, so instead of her ashes getting spread at Disneyland, they're getting spread in this toilet. Bye, Mima.
I was burning down a village in Minecraft. When I realized I haven't had human contact in four months. Since the pandemic, I've lost all social skills. When I went to the store to buy some foot cream, I screamed because I saw a live human with skin and hair. And I immediately ran out of the store. I forgot that there are like 7 billion people that exist outside my house and do their own thing. It took me a decade to learn how to have a normal conversation with strangers without my social anxiety taking over. And I don't feel like going through that again. So, I decided to go live in the wilderness. I was walking around and found a really cool mushroom on the ground. And I was feeling a little hungry, so I popped it in my mouth. But all of a sudden, I felt dizzy. And that's when I tripped and passed out. I woke up to my dog trying to eat me. Really? Already? I raised her for 10 years and it took her two hours in the forest to eat me? Anyways, I didn't think I was going to make it much longer, so I wrote my story in the mud for anyone who finds me. My name is Ben. The hunger is no match for me as I lay in this meadow but behind a Home Depot. Well, I'm going home. I was getting my teeth fixed today because last week I tried one of those bang energy drinks that all those TikTokers promote and it tasted like urine and made my teeth fall out. Anyways, as I was sitting there, I accidentally popped out the ushy gushy thing that was sitting at the back of my throat and it fell on the floor, so I picked it up off the ground and popped back in without wiping it off or anything. But then when I got home, I felt something sharp in my mouth and noticed I had a fingernail glued to my tooth. And I flipped my shit. I was so grossed out and I tried ripping it off, but it was stuck on. And then I tried using a fork to scrape it off, but that didn't work. And then I tried playing dentist and all I did was knock out another tooth. And then I realized I need something powerful to get it off. So I walked over to the local power plant near me to try and zap it off. And I climbed up a power line and bit down on it when zap. I woke up and I checked my lip and the fingernail was gone. And I was so happy. So I grabbed my phone a lightning bolt shocked me. And that's when I realized the power line had given me powers. And I was Mr. Electrodad. Hey, guess what? Today is Miss Corona's first birthday. On November 17th, 2019, the very first dude went, <coughs> and now 55 million people have gone, <coughs> and everything sucks now. Anyways, I was throwing a little party for COVID because I feel like no one else appreciates her. So I invited her over by going to the local COVID testing location, sneaking into the employees only area and licking all of the testing swabs. But when I left an employee yelled at me, <coughs> anyways, when I got home, all of a sudden I felt a little ill and boom, she was at the party. I had bought some Taco Bell for the party, ordered a thousand dollars worth of slime to play with, and just when Miss Corona thought she was about to open her birthday present, she realized the present was hand sanitizer and I grabbed the virus in a chokehold and poured the sanitizer all over the coronavirus oh, and beat shit. it with a mask for canceling everything that I was looking forward to. And worse. <laughs> Anyways, once again, please wear a mask, not just because of Corona, but also because some of y'all have musty, dusty breath. Thanks. Every morning, I check the comments on my TikToks and people always ask if I'm crazy or on the devil's salad. Because apparently I act a little bit crazy in my videos. <laughs> So, I thought I'd take you on a tour into my mind and how I make my TikToks. When I wake up, I eat expired rotten garbage from my neighbor's trash bin, and after a few hours, I start seeing and hearing things. And that's when I get to work. I take my iPad and go down into my basement where there's no light and sounds, and I start writing down a fun little story. And then I record the voiceover. I was applying a ton of lotion on my hands because they were as dry as my cat's ashes, and I also wanted my hands to be soft. But then I get frustrated for stuttering so much that I punish myself by watching a full Gabby Hanna podcast episode. Gabby. Then I go film it and send it off to my editor named Georgie, who I pay $5,000 per TikTok to edit them. Just kidding, the editor's me. Georgie's gone. <laughs> I ate him. Oh. Okay, surprise, surprise, this made no sense. But I did make an actual video showing the entire process of how I make my TikTok. So if you want to watch that, the link to the YouTube video is in my bio. I like to collect mold off of my old moldy bread and put it in a baggie that I keep in my pocket. So whenever I'm out and about at an overpriced restaurant getting an overpriced $15 acai bowl, I can order one and then eat the whole thing. And then once I'm done, I take out my mold babies and pop one in so I can take it to the register and go full Karen mode and show them the mold and then boom, baby. Refund. I've done this in the past with dead flies at Olive Garden, but I like having bread in my pocket instead of dead decaying flies. Anyways, I wanted to give my mom some makeup, so I tried it at Sephora by putting some mold in the makeup, and then I brought the sample to the manager, and I got a free one. And then I sanitized my hands to get the mold off, of course. Anyways, after Sephora, I really wanted some tortilla chips, so I grabbed a bag, opened it up, popped some mold in, and then boom! I took it to the cashier, and I got a refund, baby. And then when I got home, I took a bite and forgot to take the mold out. Boom, baby. Mold poisoning. I was at Staples because I needed some staples so I could staple a staple into my staple box so staples wouldn't fall out anymore. But staples was sold out of all the staples. And I asked a staples employee named April if they had any more staples. And she said that I could order some more staples from Naples. But this staples had no staples. So I was going to leave with no staples. But my phone was dying. So I needed a cable. So I walked past April and went to the cables. But the cables were too much. So I just bought a bagel. And now I'm at home at my table with my bagels and no staples or cables because April from staples wanted me to choke. And as I bit my bagel, it had mold and the bagel was fatal and I fell off the table and my last thoughts were of my lover named Mabel when we would sit by this table 
vegetables and pour maple all over our bagels. And as I took my last breath on the floor, I saw a staple. I bought some tortilla chips from the store, but while I was eating them, I realized that the TIT in the Tostitos logo is two people sharing some chips and salsa. I thought, how cute is that? As I sat there with no friends to share my chips and salsa with. And no TIT either, because I am a boy. But that's when I realized, duh, I can just throw myself a chip and salsa party. People can come over and we can make salsa, but not using tomatoes because they are disgusting. Instead, we'll make, uh, what's a good thing to turn into a salsa? Dirty sock. <gasps> That's it! Dirty Sock Salsa! Because anything tastes better than tomatoes! Anyways, I still need people to come to my salsa party, because right now, there's no TIT! So I did what any sane person would do. I posted my address on the internet! Instantly, my doorbell was ringing non-stop. And that's when I realized I posted my address on comerobme.com! After looking at my video doorbell, I didn't want to give the creeps outside any of my belongings. And especially not my Animal Crossing amiibo. So, I gave them the one thing I did not need. Salsa with tomatoes! Anyways, I may be having my salsa party alone now but i still got my dirty sock salsa i was sitting on the floor eating a rice crispy snack when my dad randomly came home with a dog we don't have a dog we have a cat so what is that and i said did you just buy a dog and my dad told me he just bought a dog so um i guess i have a dog at my dad's house now and i want to go pet it but it keeps running away from me and looking at me like i'm a demon which i am <laughs> but it still made me sad and i was sitting around trying to figure out how to become friends with this baby dog and then i realized i could probably give it something like a tree so i got off my butt and i went upstairs and i looked in the pantry and found some dog bones i opened up the package and grabbed a bone and then I slowly approached him and placed it on the mat. But then my dad's cat Luna got in the way. Oh. Anyways, I gave it another bone and <laughs> it bit my hand so hard like three fingers fell off. I had to call an ambulance. Just kidding. Uh, he let me come near and when I touched him, he twitched and it scared me a little bit. But then he let me pet him. And now we're almost besties and I took him on a little walk and took some cute pictures with him. So if you want to see more of Sammy, I posted the pics on my Instagram at Ben of the Week. Okay, bye. So people used to say I look a lot like Noah Centineo, but then he grew a beard and bleached it and now if you ever say I look like him, I will cry. But then I thought, I have a prime opportunity to impersonate him. <laughs> now, I can't grow a blonde beard in 10 seconds, but I know someone that has what I need. I grabbed my dog, Kobe, and cut off a little bit of her hair and taped it to my cheeks. It felt a little bit uncomfy because she's fleas and they got mad and started biting me, but whatever. I looked in the mirror and thought, oh my God, I'm Noah Centineo. Now, I just need to post from his Instagram account and tell people to send me $3 million so I can buy 3 million refrigerators and leave them open and stop climate change. I was logging into his account, but I didn't know his password. First, I tried one, two, three, four, and what, what the, it what? Just as I was about to make the post, I got a call from the FBI. They said, you've been caught hacking. We're going to drop a nuke on your house. I screamed, ah! And I grabbed everything I love and got my car and drove as fast as I could. But as I was driving, I was like, wow, these clouds are so beautiful. It looks it looks so peaceful out here. Oh, I'm about to drive off the road. Uh, uh, ah! Today, I door dashed some cooked goldfish from PetSmart because I was really hungry and they were only $3. So I placed the order and walked over to PetSmart to pick it up. But when I got there, I walked in and found the food pickup section and saw all the soon-to-be sushi swimming around in their little tanks that were... Right next to the not-so-swimming sushi. And that's when I realized maybe pet store food isn't the best move. But I was still super hungry, so I asked an employee if they have anything else to eat. But she told me if I want to act picky, they have rats for sale. So I opened up the rat fridge and... I couldn't do it. So I ended up buying some bugs for like $2, which was such a great and amazing deal. And when I got home, I was so hungry that I ripped open the bag of bugs and just told myself that this little grasshopper in my chopsticks is a Cheeto. So I popped it in my mouth and I felt movement. And I spat it out and it jumped out of the bowl. And I panicked and ran to the toilet. For the next three hours, I vomited up my insides. So I was making a delicious quarantine meal of salad and licorice, aka diabetes salad, when something <laughs> caught my eye outside my kitchen window. I looked across my yard to see my neighbor had left a message for me. I immediately thought, bruh, I'm about to have a Taylor Swift music video love story, but then I remembered that my neighbor is a 72-year-old grandma named Myrtle that smells like moldy peas. I looked closer and saw that her sign just said hello. I thought, okay, she seems pretty friendly, so I grabbed some paper and decided to write a note back. I scribbled down, hi Myrtle, and drew some hearts. I ran upstairs to my window, left it there overnight, hoping that I could have some fun with that elderly bag of bones and skin. Then the next morning, I ran upstairs to see what she'd written back. So anyways, I'm currently hiding in my basement with my dog and my Animal Crossing trying to figure out what to say back. Please help, I'll reply in part two.
So we just hit five million. And I wanted to celebrate with baked bean jello. I got my keys and drove over to the dollar store and bought a candle, some beans, and jello. Then I drove home and got all my ingredients together and started cooking. First, I boiled some earth juice and then tried reading the instructions, but I got bored. So I yanked the powder out and started pouring it. But then that thing happened where it's going too slow, so you have to stop and rip a new one. And then it was flowing like my eyes when I watched Tap at the Brown's cooking videos. Then I poured the boiling earth juice and then a cup of cold earth juice. And I stirred it until I gave myself arthritis until I remembered, <gasps> I forgot the beans. I found an old can opener and then I put a can of beans in the mic. Okay, not funny. Anyways, I tried to open it, but the lid got stuck and I panicked. But then I finally got it half open and I strained the beans because I didn't want bean juice. Ah, bean juice! But then as I was straining it, the camera just decided to tilt away from me, which was quite rude. Anyways, I had my clean beans and I poured them in the jello, stirred it a bit, dropped the five in the jello, and then put it in the fridge. It has to chill overnight. So if you want to see how my cursed bean jello turned out, the final product is on my Instagram at Ben of the Week. Some of y'all be taking your pictures like cheese, eh, but when that tongue comes out, it be looking like cheese! If you open your mouth and it looks like you have a mozzarella cheese fondue in there, well then you can call me lactose intolerant because I will not tolerate that. You better go grab your little tongue scrub brush and head over to that tongue Remy from Ratatouille. Today I woke up sad and single for the 7,347th day of my life. As I got up to drink my water bottle full of stale Red Bull, I thought, no, this ends today. Okay, here goes nothing. Dear Zendaya, you don't know me, but I love you. This is my formal marriage proposal to you. April Fool's was yesterday, so I'm dead serious. I would love to marry you on the set of Shake It Up, but the set's actually on top of a boat in the middle of Fiji. And I've invited every Disney Channel icon. Look, there's Bertram from Jesse sitting next to Bob Duncan from Good Luck Charlie. Oh, and there's Mr. Mosby from The Sweet Life. Wait, why is everyone in the audience a bald man? Anyways, I invited Bella Thorne, but she couldn't make it because they stopped her at the airport because she was trying to smuggle drugs. Anyways, I truly believe you were the most beautiful woman on the planet. If I could describe how how you make me feel it's like when you see a hydraulic press video and they squish a piece of soap and it becomes little soap noodles in the air now my net worth is three dollars and a half use subway gift card so i made my own little soap noodle ring just for you so zendaya will you be my wife guys please send this to her if she sees this i will scream Every day I bike past this fenced off neighborhood near me that's radioactive from a nuclear meltdown. But today I decided to explore it, so I went through a gap in the fence and after walking for about 10 minutes, I got to this mysterious door in the middle of nowhere, so I did a little knock and let myself in and closed it behind me to be polite to the radiation. Anyways, I went down the stairs and saw, um, some interesting artifacts that I was not exactly a fan of. And I continued through the bunker and found a very inviting door that made me feel super safe, which led to more stairs that had my knees cracking like Rice Krispies. Anyways, I eventually got to this tunnel and some doors at the end of it that said danger do not enter, but I went in because my middle name is Danger. Just kidding, it's Emil. And after I went through the door, it closed behind me and I tried everything but couldn't open it up because it was locked. So I decided to look around and see what my grave location was gonna look like, thinking maybe it's a movie theater or a game room. And I turned the lights on to see that it was an actual nuclear missile silo where they held the nukes. And it went a hundred feet down and now this is where I live, I guess. And my phone is on 1% uploading this TikTok. So if you see this, that's the last time you're gonna- I was writing a love letter to Zendaya when I got a paper cut and it hurt really bad. But I noticed nothing was coming out and I looked closer and that's when I realized that I'm made of cake. Just like those videos online of random objects being made out of cake like Crocs and toilet paper. And then I started panicking and thinking, what if my dog is made out of cake? What if my house is made out of cake? Where's all this cake coming from? The baking aisle the grocery store isn't nearly big enough to make it make all this cake. What if all of reality is cake and when we discover that we ourselves are cake, the overlords of the cakeverse, aka the bakers, collect us from the earth and prepare Paris for baking in their cake ship, and once we're baked to a crisp, they serve us to the other bakers! <gasps> Hey, uh, I haven't got much sleep, so I don't know what I just said. But anyways, I forgot to eat, so I went over to the grocery store to buy some muffins. And while I was looking at them, I wondered what the difference is between a muffin and a cupcake. Cake? Cake? <laughs> cake! Ah! So it is currently December, and the pandemic has gotten on my last nerve. So I bought a coronavirus vaccine off of Wish.com for only $20,000. And I had to wait two months for it to come. But then it finally arrived in this huge crate that I could barely lift up the stairs. But I opened up the box and I pulled the vial out. I wasn't sure how to take it, but I wasn't going to use a needle because I am needle-aphobic. So I put some of it in my juice bottle and I drank it and I was feeling pretty okay. And I went to go test it out by licking as many public surfaces as I could for an hour straight. Then as I was walking home, I started to feel a little dizzy. And when I finally got home, I double-checked the packaging, only to realize they had sent me a vial of Obama bathwater. And there was no vaccine. I took the vial and flushed it down the toilet, but then I remembered, uh, you can't flush glass down the toilet. And then I heard a bang, and I ran outside to go see what it was. And all the pipes had exploded on my street, and there was doo-doo water everywhere. And I had caused a disaster. But the one good thing was, I saw Remy the Ratatouille floating on a piece of cheese. And I said hi, Remy, as he sailed off into the drain. <laughs> 
I was giving palm trees high fives because like our hands are palms and palm trees are palms. So what if every time we pass one, we're leaving it hanging because its palms are out and it's expecting a high five and it gets sad and it drops all its coconuts and one falls on an elderly person. Uh, anyways, I got home and saw that I had some weird goo on my hand from touching all the trees and I couldn't wash it off or scrape it off and like hand sanitizer wouldn't even dissolve it. And I was so confused what it was. And that's when I realized it's a squished ant. But it kind of smelled like go-go squeeze applesauce. So I took a lick of it and- Let me tell you these spicy- so now I was addicted to ants, and every single day after that moment, I would take a straw to the cracks of every sidewalk in my neighborhood, sucking up ants, and they are pure protein, so I became so strong. And I was so powerful, my muscles became so big. Next week, I'll be doing my first UFC fight. Wish me luck. So last week, I woke up and decided to buy a hamster. And like, I put it in a cage, but then the hamster experts in the comments canceled me and informed me that cages are very bad. So immediately, we got a fish tank and filled it with hamster bedding and gave her a house and then another house. And then I chopped up some bananas and spinach and carrots and made a little kebab, and she's thriving. But she still needed a name, and I asked you guys what we should name her. Her. And there were 159,000 suggestions, but one of the top ones was Sophia the First. She was a hamster in the village doing all right. Then she became a princess over the No, that's so bad. Then people said she could be called Grilled Spicy Chicken Sandwich. And I asked her, and she was like, she clearly didn't like that. So I was like, all right, Miss Hamster, what'll it be? I went to the fridge because I was hungry and there was a 7-Eleven taquito. That's perfect. Everyone say hi to taquito. Anyways, I just posted some cute little pictures with taquito. So if you want to go check them out, my Instagram is at Ben of the Week. I was enjoying some banana on the cob and scrolling through TikTok when I saw someone playing this Mario Kart in real life game. So I took my friend's credit card and ordered it. But when it came in the mail and I actually got to open it up and play it, the game was about as fun as listening to Ed Sheeran out of your own free will. So not fun at all. But you know what? It was okay. Cause I bought it for the only purpose of seeing if I could take it through a drive-thru and ordering something. So I strapped my credit card to it and a walkie talkie so that I can order through the microphone. And I taped it to Luigi really good and then drove all the way over to Popeye's. And it was time to release Luigi and see if I could successfully order a fry. I set everything up and then just like that, the little Italian was off. But as he drove up to the microphone, I didn't think they could see him. So at first I did some donuts to get their attention. And then as I was spinning him around, they were like, <laughs> And I was about to tell them my order when I saw there was a car coming into the drive-thru. I panicked and grabbed my switch to try and drive away. But it said it was disconnected, so I ran over to the drive-thru and... Our favorite plumber, Luigi, was killed by a Mitsubishi. Anyways, the funeral is on Monday. Please comment your condolences if you would like to attend. I'm in North Korea right now, because last week I was just making some delicious corn dog sushi in Japan. And before I could take a bite, I heard the nuclear missile warnings go off because Kimmy Jong-un was having a hissy fit. I spilled my corn dog sushi because of him, but as I was hiding underneath the table about to be vaporized, that's when I realized North Korea is only two hours away. So I bought a Kit Kat because Kim Jong-un needs to take a freaking break and a ticket to North Korea. So I can tell him to stop doing that. Anyways, I went to the airport and the plane was either on fire or someone just had a vape. But anyways, once I landed, I immediately got on this bus and the soldiers boarded the bus and checked my documents and then i was sent through this underground tunnel underneath the border and then i emerged at kim jong-un's palace and it was pretty cute for a warmongering dictator i walked up to the gate and gave it a good old knock but no one was home i guess so i was just walking around when i heard a security alarm go off and i scrambled to find a place to hide so i ducked into this cubby hole and hid there until they were gone and then i snuck out into the bushes and spent hours trying to return to civilization and i ate some blueberries that weren't blueberries <laughs> but hours later i finally found my way out and decided to give up on world peace and just eat the kit kat because i was hungry sorry kimmy stop stop Hi, here's how you can save the Arctic in less than a minute. There's a place called the Arctic National Wildlife Refuge. It is one of the last places in the US Arctic where endangered animals such as polar bears, caribou, and over 200 species of birds are protected from humans. Trump's administration could open up this piece of public land and sell it for oil and drilling by January 6th. Now the Gwich'in people have been living on this sacred land for decades. This land is home to them and they will be irreversibly harmed along with all the other wildlife that live there if we let this happen. So here's how you can help stop that in the time that it takes to watch a TikTok. Please go Go to protectthearctic.org. The link is in my bio on both Instagram and TikTok. Just write your name, email, and it'll send a message to the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service. And hopefully with enough of these messages, we can prevent the sale. The Arctic is already in the worst shape that's ever been before because of climate change. We will be the generation that's affected by climate change the most. We can do our part to fix this. So please do this quick action. Push for sustainability in your daily life. And that's all for now. I love you. Bye. Today, my worst nightmare happened. So I bought this fun shirt, which had this cute little accessory on it, which actually isn't a fun accessory. It's a big exploding ink security tag that they just forgot to take off of my $50 shirt. So anyways, now I'm panicking because I'm too nervous to go back into the store and ask them to take it off. So I tried pulling it off with my teeth, but I didn't want the ink to explode on my face, staining me permanently blue like a smurf. So I looked online and apparently you need to freeze the tag to get it off. So I went to go throw it in the freezer and for some reason there was raw chicken in the freezer and this is my house, this is an Airbnb. And then I put the shirt in the freezer and waited all night and I was getting impatient. So I decided to just pull it out and grab two forks, a pizza cutter, some tongs and some spoons. And I took the forks and jammed it in the tag and it was not working. And I got 
got mad, so I whipped it against the ground, and then I stomped on it, and then I grabbed a chair, and I used that, and then I tried some spoons, and it still didn't work. So I laid down on the ground until I realized I could microwave it. So I put it in for almost 10 minutes, and it started smelling a little spicy. So I took it out and used the forks again, and I got it off! And we're out of time, but if you want to see me set it off, I'm going to detonate it on my Instagram story. <laughs> Today I woke up and decided it's a good day to buy a hamster. My friend and I zoomed over to the hamster store, and we looked at them, and they were so cute. And we realized we need a hamster house and some hamster food, so we loaded up a cart and got a bunch of toys and bedding. Then it was time to pick a hamster, so we got an employee to open up the box, and my friend picked a little one, and then it bit her! And like, not like a tiny bite, like this hamster got like a whole vein, and there was this family watching horror as my friend lost blood. Anyways, that hamster was cancelled, and we grabbed a different one, and the employee put her in a different box, but we were about to go in the car, and we were like, this box sucks, so we put her in her own little transport orb. Then we got home and put together her little hamster house with a little carrot, and we took her out the hamster ball, and she was exploring and vibing, and she still doesn't have a name, so if you have any ideas, please let me know. I was microwaving hot chip ravioli and sitting by a fire that I started in my living room when I started longing for someone to share the meal with. But then my eyes caught the word Tinder. I dropped my ravioli and grabbed my phone to download Tinder. And I made a profile to show off my personality and my love for food. After I added some pictures and finished my profile, I was gonna run some ranch dressing through my coffee maker to see what would happen. When all of a sudden my phone went off, and when I grabbed it, it notified me that I had a match. Ever since then, we've been talking non-stop, and we're gonna go on a picnic tonight and see who can dislocate their jaw the furthest and fit the most apples in their mouth. Anyways, wish me luck on my date. Today I accidentally burned out my house because I was boiling Listerine and Red Bull to make delicious tea when I saw a wasp had waltzed into my house. And I'm extremely allergic, so I grabbed a container to try and capture him so I could send him back to hell. And I got him, but then I realized if I try and get the lid on, he's gonna fly out and sting me, and then I will end up in hell and he will haunt me forever. So I dropped it and I ran and grabbed a piece of paper and then I put it back on and slid it under. And I actually managed to pull out the paper and I had successfully abducted him. So I put him on a plate and microwaved him until he lit up. Just kidding. I realized I'll definitely go to hell if I do that, so I let him outside and carefully put him down and released the hatches and he kicked it away. But then he got up and chased me inside and I closed the door and I thought it was safe. And oh, I forgot to turn the stove burner off and... Do y'all remember that trend where people would draw their entire life story? Well, I'm gonna be the first TikToker to do it. Hi, I'm Ben, and I was born at zero years old in Edmonton, Canada. Right when I was born, my parents and I moved from Canada to Massachusetts, United States. And my mom would take me to the beach a lot to collect rocks until one day a nuclear reactor almost melted down, so we stopped going there. When I started school, I was low-key really big-brained, and I was such a smart cookie that they put me in the smart kids class. That was until I found out that smart kid class is seven hours a day, not three hours like preschool was. So I literally ran out of the classroom to escape, and when the teacher caught me, I kicked her in the thigh and gave her a permanent bruise. So I feel bad about that. Anyways, I got a dog named Kobe and I love her so much. I can't draw her, so here's her on the table. The middle school I went to was really yeah, and I was the only brown kid there, so I got bullied. Oh crap, I'm out of time. If you want to see more about that and how I was an exchange student in Japan and my girlfriend, the link to the YouTube video is in my bio. I was seeing how many oranges I could fit in my mouth before throwing up when my doorbell rang. I wasn't expecting anyone, and when I answered it, there was no one there, just a notebook. It was kind of creepy, but when I opened it, I realized it was for my horse girl cousin Gretchen, and she'd drawn me, uh, Peppa Pig? I thought I'd draw her something back, so I made, um, two minions in love, and I left it in the same place for her. The next morning, the doorbell rang again, and I opened it to find another Peppa, so I took the liberty of drawing Rainy Rodriguez as my sleep paralysis demon, and put it back the same place as yesterday. Oh. However, the next day I received something completely different. When I opened the sketchbook, Peppa had turned into bacon? Is, is this a threat? I texted her, haha, very funny, Gretchen, stop coming to my house. And she was like, what? And so I replied, Peppa time is canceled, Gretchen. And she replied, I don't know what you're talking about. So, knowing that wasn't Gretchen the whole time, I felt completely terrified, so I watched some seafood ASMR eating and fell asleep. I woke up to my leg burning from my laptop, my hand kind of felt weird, and I noticed I was covered in bacon. Anyways, now I'm completely terrified, and I don't know what to draw in return. Please help. I was joining some random Zoom calls today so I could make some friends. But after accidentally joining an Amish call in the Zoom, I accidentally joined the Zoom call with this guy in it. And I was like, who's that? Until I realized I had joined a call with Dr. Fauci, the chief medical advisor to the president. And then I looked in the mirror to make sure I didn't look like a cockroach. And then as soon as I looked presentable, I grabbed my laptop and brought it out to the living room. And then I joined the call and I was like, how are you, Dr. Fauci? And he said, I'm good, Ben. Nice to be with you. How you doing? And then I froze and tried to think of like a question about COVID or something. And that's when I remembered my uncle texting me out of the blue saying that there's pee in the vaccine so i was like let me set the record straight so i asked him the vaccine looks like it's just a few drops of water and i feel like a lot of people don't really know what's actually going on in there you, what vaccine did you get ben i have moderna i got moderna too so okay what, so when you and i got injected what happened it went into the muscle the body recognizes the protein of that virus 
and neutralizes it. I feel like that was like a, a crash course in a PhD in biology, but <laughs> it all made sense. I, I figured it out. Well, you heard it from the White House. Better of the week. The vaccines are safe. Go get it, please. My friend's dog looked like a dust bunny. So we took him to the groomers and got him shaved. And now he looks like a little puffy cloud and he's so cute, even though he kind of looks like a human in a dog suit, like that one meme of that dog. Anyways, when we got home, we were cuddling, but then I noticed that he was digging for something in the beanbag chair. And I was like so confused. Like, was he trying to make bread? But then I noticed there was smoke coming from the beanbag chair seams. At first, I thought I tipped over one of the hundreds of unattended candles I have lit at all times. But the chair like wasn't warm or anything. So I unzipped it more and I was engulfed in a cloud of smoke and I blacked out. When I woke up, it was like I had gone through a poor and I was in some alternate reality where terrible world events such as Dance Monkey was never released. And the bat with COVID-19 ran into a glass window. I was loving this new world until I walked into my Minecraft-themed bedroom and realized in this universe, Minecraft doesn't exist. I fell to my knees and screamed until I woke up next to the beanbag and I looked inside to realize that the smoke was actually just fungal spores from a moldy chicken nugget. Hi, you're about to watch me transform into Donald Trump. I did it by going to Party City to get a Trump wig and orange face paint. And then I put on his dump truck, yuck, yuck, ugly as f wig on. And then I covered my face in the orange paint to look like his moldy oldie so orange it's unholy looking like he's 80 skin which ended up staining my fingers and my face orange and it got in my eyes which was really painful but that's not the point the point is i remembered trump is now unemployed so i thought i'd prank all some places using my trump voice and ask if i can get a job a very big job <laughs> first i called home depot since they're orange just like trump are you guys hiring by any chance uh, yes, we are. spectacular wonderful I actually lost my job today. Here's my application. First name, Donald. Last name, Trump. Uh, we're out of time, but if you want to see if I got a job interview, the link to the YouTube videos in my bio. Okay, bye. I recently turned 21, and I realized I've never been D-word before. And now I finally get uh, Please ignore the fact that this is my license picture. Anyways, I was ready to drink some go-go juice. I'm not talking about these, although they are very fire. And I wanted to drink my first, uh, legal drink at the one-of-a-kind special Taco Bell in Las Vegas that you can get married at or get Baja Blast Margaritas with a Lucifer's Jucifer in it. So I packed my bags and I flew to Las Vegas. I was walking around looking for it and I saw the Statue of Liberty. But then it started getting dark and I was getting really tired until I found the Taco Bell. The screen asked if I was 21 and then it asked what kind of Alka Bryce Hall I wanted in my Baja Blast. And then they started making it. And here she was, a foot-long Baja Blast sending me straight to hell, mama. I drank about a half of it and like, I was running around screaming. Anyways, I finally made it back to the hotel hotel and decided to take a jacuzzi bath and while i was in that jacuzzi i took some scandalous pictures so if you want to go check them out my instagram is ben of the week so i had just finished filling out all my private information and passwords to claim my free macbook pro that i won from this one email i got until i heard a knock at my door i was feeling a little bit scared because it was 3 a.m but i remembered i gave them my social security number so that means they're gonna keep me safe i was gonna go turn my computer off and head upstairs to check the door but it said that a virus was shutting it down for me now i don't want the coronavirus but if it's gonna start doing things for me well then homegirl can like get it. I crept upstairs so I wouldn't wake up my dog and I opened up the door, but like there was no one there. Then I heard a weird sound come from downstairs and saw that my computer was on. I'm like, I thought Miss Corona turned it off. There was a message on the screen from a hacker saying, I'm watching you. I started screaming because I don't know how to process conflict any other way. But then I was surprised to see a message that said, your outfit's cute. Listen, I'm so starved for human attraction that we fell in love. I'm Ben, and you're watching Hack Into My Heart, the new reality TV show on TLC. I was so excited today to see Harry Styles in that new movie that he's in today. So I went to the theater and snuck in my own snacks because a hot dog is $12, but a pea and ketchup sandwich is two. But as I was enjoying, enjoying my delicious meal, um, they flashed an ad for like three seconds saying, bring, bring blood, blood to bathroom stall four. And I looked around the theater and like, no one was phased by this. So I, I sat through the movie, but Harry Styles wasn't the only thing making me feel curious. So I left as I as the credits rolled and I went to the bathroom and I didn't think anyone was in there, but I um, I found stall number four and I went in, locked the door behind me, and uh, there was this there, there was a guy asking for the blood, I guess, and um, I wasn't about to give him my my blood, but I remembered that I had my ketchup still, so I poured some on a piece of toilet paper and I, and I handed it to him, and it turns out the guy in the stall was actually just out of toilet paper and needed some, and I don't know what the cult stuff was about, but this, but I'm now about to be murdered. Hey! I really needed a girlfriend to quarantine with, so I decided to abduct a live cockroach from the Burger King parking lot. Meet Sally. She's my bae, and we were so in love. I took her on dates to the park, and we would go skateboarding together. Life was absolutely beautiful when I was around here. She never ever bugged me. <laughs> 
Ow. So on one sunny day, I decided to ask for Sally's hand in marriage. But as I got down on one knee and said, will you marry me? She remembered a few weeks ago when she caught me cheating with Gilberto the fly. Me and Gilberto did indeed have a fling, but I swore it was nothing. We, we were just friends. It, it was just one date. But Sally couldn't take it and rejected my proposal. I was destroyed and I thought, if, if I can't have you, no one can. I took on my magnifying glass and made a laser beam with the sun's ray. I thought it was goodbye, Sally, as she caught fire, but frick, I'm out of time. Uh, full videos in my bio. So I'm scrolling through Twitter and I see that Justin Bieber was diagnosed with Lyme disease. Immediately, I roll up my sleeve and ask the tick that's been sucking my blood for the past five days that I picked up in Zimbabwe if he's gonna give me Lyme disease. Are you gonna give me Lyme disease? No, nah, bro, you're good. I'm clean. Feeling relieved, I go back to bed. Wait, I do have lemon disease, though. Lemon disease? What? <laughs> People always ask me, Ben, how is your skin so bright and shiny? So instead of gatekeeping my skincare routine, I'd tell them, personalized skincare formula. <gasps> what I meant to say is, I use Curology's customized skincare formula to keep my skin healthy. My family's used Curology for generations and passed it along to me. Just kidding, they probably use laundry detergent to wash their face, and that's why my uncle's cousin has three eyes. Anyways, I live in the future where all I have to do is send my selfies over to Curology and let my provider know what my skin situation is. And that's how I got my first month of customized skincare for free, plus shipping and handling. Every night I wash my face with a cleanser and then apply my customized skin cream that was prepared just for me. Then I finish it off with a rich moisturizer and voila, my skin is bright and shiny. Isn't that right, clone, that I gave a third degree sunburn to? Hey, can I listen? Yeah, of course. <laughs> can, can you can you clean it, please? Oh my god, yeah, I'm so sorry. Let me clean it. Oh. <laughs> what are you doing? Um, I don't want to listen anymore. <laughs> Look, it's all clean. <laughs> go on, put it in. I wanted to go to Chili's today, but it was burning down. So instead, I went to go get sushi. But it was one of those places where it comes on a conveyor belt and you can take what you want, except for this piece of shrimp that refused to cooperate and wouldn't relate. But it's okay, because they also have a screen you can order from. So I ordered myself some crispy rice and it zoomed by faster than I could say, no officer, I had nothing to do with the Chili's burning down. Anyways, then I saw these nasty cubes that look like Minecraft gravel and I lost my appetite. So I put all the plates down the chute since I was done with them when I wondered what's actually in there. And it said, please don't insert hands or objects. But what did I do? Hit record on my phone and insert it into the slot, which was really smart because then I dropped it down into the chute and had to call over a waiter in shame and he told me that non-plate items go out the garbage chute around back. So I went down this creepy corridor and finally found it and when I grabbed my phone and sat down to check what footage I had recorded, uh, I saw... Okay, this is why I'm banned from Zoom. A few weeks ago, I joined some of my followers' Zoom classes. Uh, I'm with uh, Zoom Technical Support, and we've been getting some DDoS attacks, and they've got like your, your Minecraft password, your Roblox password. I don't actually have Minecraft or any of that. <laughs> now, it was just some good old jokes, and I posted on YouTube for fun, but what I didn't expect was for the video to get almost 2 million views. And I was like, hey, that's kind of cool. And then I went to bed, and when I checked my email the next day, I found out that people snitched, and the teacher sent privacy complaints. Now, I haven't been on this planet for too long, but I did not think jail would be coming this soon. So obviously, I blurred all the faces out, and I thought it was done, but that's when I got emails from some of them. The first email was from a mom asking if it was her child that sent me the Zoom link, and I'm like, I don't remember what I had for breakfast. Oh, wait, I do remember. It was a big old bowl of nothing, because my stomach doesn't activate until 3 p.m., and I hate eggs, because they're just chicken poop that becomes a baby chicken. Anyways, I told her I didn't know until a teacher emailed me. We're out of time, but if you want to see what they said and why Zoom banned me, the link to the YouTube video is in my bio. I was swinging on a jungle swing in the jungle and I was enjoying myself when I saw a screw fall out of the top and the rope snapped and I tumbled down the mountain. When I woke up, I didn't know where I was and there was like people sword fighting and squirrels fighting and I tried running from the squirrels that were like everywhere and I thought to myself, who is this many squirrels? And I looked into the distance and saw a chocolate factory and then behind a tree emerged Willy Wonka himself. I waved at him and he told me to eat this chocolate to be transported to a place where I can take all the candy I want. So I picked it up, put it in my mouth and I fell asleep again. When I woke up this this time, I was at a candy store, so I grabbed as much candy as I could. And when I was done, I walked out. But apparently, it was a grocery store, and I just shoplifted all that candy, and Willy Wonka lied to me, and I ran away from the FBI that was chasing me, but they caught me and threw me in a jail cell. But it's okay, because I still have my fruit snacks and candy. Yeah. Oh, I spent a week in Japan only eating out of vending machines, and I ate stuff like fish in a bottle. 
Uh, let's try it. You are technically only supposed to drink the soup around it, but I wanted to free little Nemo. But you have to break the bottle open, and the soup was all right. But I was more invested in sending little buddy back to his home. Just kidding, he clogged my toilet, and I can't poop. Next, I went to a bread vending machine, where you could get this bread in a can. This is great if you've ever had the intrusive thought to eat the insulation out of your walls. Next was a banana vending machine, which is just bananas. <laughs> oh, fuck. Next, I got this vitamin C drink, which tasted good, but turned my pee green. And the cap got stuck to my finger, and I had to pry it off before it turned purple. But then I found an edible bug vending machine. So I bought a pack for $14, even though they live in my bed for free. And surprise, surprise, they were nasty. But as I ate them, this man walked in on me eating bugs outside his restaurant. Um, okay. And I am too scared to ever go back to Japan. I was eating some raw chicken sushi when out of the corner of my eye, I saw a furry and then another furry. So I got up to see what was going on and followed them. And then there was 10 furries and 20 furries and hundreds of furries. And I realized there was a whole furry convention at the mall I was at. But um, then I remembered I just didn't pay at the restaurant and I heard them say on the intercom. In the eater, the police would like a bird with you. And I was like, Jesus Christ, I need to get out of here. But these furries were everywhere. And I tried to sneak into this dark warehouse, but there was a rave going on inside. So I found a door to the outside but it was raining and had no exit and no hope until i saw someone's left behind fursuit on the ground with some stains in it but i had no other way to escape so i put it on and try and blend in and re-enter the mall and saw so many horrifying things and still couldn't find the exit and was getting actual heat stroke so i decided to just turn myself in so i went up to a cop and said i'd like to turn myself in and it was a damn utopia cop so i just bolted out of that lawless wasteland and jumped over furries to find a fire exit and made it out and stripped down and, and threw my suit in the river I was really bored, so I tried to buy the most expensive thing on Gucci's website for funsies, but that's when I remembered, Ben, you can't afford Taco Bell. So I was typing random numbers, hoping one was an actual credit card number, and nothing was working. I was like, well, there goes my well alpaca cardigan. Finally, I tried 69, 69, 69, 69. Expiration date, April 20th, aka 420, <laughs> and security code 666, and I hit enter. I was like, uh, well, that was fun. So I closed my laptop, but then I got an email, saying my order had shipped, and then suddenly I heard a knock at the door, and I was like, <gasps> I didn't know what I just did, so I checked my doorbell cam and there was a stranger there then i heard the door open and then there were footsteps coming towards me and then falling uh and then the intruder got up and said this is the fbi we've got you and i was like you've got me you think you've been watching me for the past month i've had my fbi agent's laptop bugged every time he logs in to watch me i've been watching him in fact i ordered this exact item knowing it would bring him here he ran back to his hq to open up his laptop and in disbelief there i was fully in control of the fbi system checkmate I don't know if you've seen those comments on TikTok of beautiful women asking if there are any boys here, but today I remembered I am a boy. So I decided to investigate and saw that she was asking me to go to her bio. So I clicked the link in her bio and it instantly froze my iPad and I couldn't close the app or anything until a thing popped up asking for my phone number and credit card number to fix it. And so obviously I was like, thank God, the solution. So I grabbed my credit card from my wallet and typed it in. But then after I did that, my iPad fully shut off and started smoking. But I was like, okay, thank God they reminded me what my my credit card number is so i went to the apple store to go replace all my apple products that are now fried but i got distracted and tried to make the wallpapers minions kissing and i played some random rats dancing on all the iphones but then an employee yelled at me so i fled with no iphone and now i'm trying to catch a bird so i can use it as a carrier pigeon to talk to people since i have no electronic devices left I was putting my clothes in the dishwasher today because I broke my washing machine when I tried washing dishes in it last week because my dishwasher was broken in the first place. But anyways, I was in the kitchen and heard a snowball hit my window and when I looked out the window, my elderly neighbor Myrtle had put up a sign that said, check your mail. Now, as threatening as that seemed, I was so excited because her son owns the website where you watch corn with a pea. And in the past, she's given me like a thousand dollars at Christmas and a cute little picture of herself. So I went to the door and grabbed the card and when I opened it, I noticed that this time there was no gift, which is fine and all, but also the picture she had sent me had some man hand in the corner and on the card there was weird capitalization so i highlighted the capital letters and it spelled help me and i started freaking out so i drove over to her house which was 50 feet away sorry greta thunberg and i was gonna save her from being choked but um when i got there there was a van outside that said uh 50 shades of play and i think that's what what myrtle's into so now i'm traumatized i was enjoying some banana on the cob when i realized lockdown is over here so i got in the car hit the gas and drove to the closest thrift store and i went thrifting when i walked in the thrift store i passed by the toy aisle and there was a doll on the bottom shelf playing this really creepy song and i know some dolls are cursed but it's only two dollars and the demon can keep me company so i bought Frick, it my mask is falling anyways i brought it home but when i looked at it again i noticed there was a note attached to the bottom that read make a wish on your and I thought, <laughs> that's Pennywise's line. This doll's gonna get sued for copying the movie It before it possesses me. But I do be scared of demons, though. So I wished for the first thing that I could think of, which was an air fryer. Then after making my wish, I went to bed. 
I woke up the next morning to the birds chirping the sunshine and ah, 300 pound air fryer on my chest crushing me to the point where I couldn't breathe. I finally got it off and thought, you know what, Mr. Demon, thank you for the air fryer. It's not exactly how Amazon would have delivered it, but I like your vision. Then I realized I have another wish left. I was thinking, what do I want more of? <gasps> some fire shoes. So I said, I want some fire. You want fire? <laughs> <laughs> This morning, I woke up to see that the internet was trying to cancel the Demilios for not eating snails. Stop! Y'all are telling me you've never been overdramatic when your parents cooked food you didn't like? So you made a fuss about it? Yeah, I know you did. Snails are disgusting, just to be clear. I wouldn't care if Gordon Ramsay cooked me an entire dish with snails, because if I bit into a snail thinking it was a mushroom, I would spit it out too. Also, if you're a grown adult trying to cancel them, just pack it up and admit that you're jealous that two teenagers have accomplished more in a year than you have in your whole career. Anyways, after getting severe brain damage from seeing people reach so far they dislocated their arms, I went back to sleep, and in my dream, I was walking around an empty abandoned and street in the dark when I saw a giant snail and it started screaming eat me eat me and I ran into the nearest house and closed the garage door and just when I thought I was safe I felt something slimy on my arm and I heard a voice say it's time for you to escort go <laughs> I was simply vibing in an abandoned airport. Because if you've seen the news recently, that millionaire YouTuber Jeffree Star got robbed. And I was actually one of the culprits. I went to his house and I opened up his dresser and found some Gucci shoes and a Dior bag and I grabbed as much cash as I could and I dipped. And as I was in the elevator escaping from the fifth floor of his house, I realized I'm a millionaire. I should go shopping. So I went looking for the Gucci store, but everything was closed because of COVID. So I went home, opened up my laptop to do some online shopping and saw that the abandoned airport near me is for sale. So I bought it for $420 million. And when I got there, it was completely empty. I was running around exploring the empty food court and pretending I was airport security. And then I did a little dance because I was enjoying myself. When I decided to take a flight to Rwanda, which is the furthest possible country from America. But while I was flying, I noticed that Jeffree Star was on the wing and he was sabotaging the plane trying to get revenge on me. And then the lights went out and there was a bunch of turbulence. And ah! Do you ever wonder how it went down for the first person to ever get their ear pierced? Like, how did that happen? Was it just like, uh... <laughs> You like the new piercing? Look, we're matching. <laughs> ooh, 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 ooh. What the hell is a piercing? This is a this is a stabbing. <laughs> no bitch, you got this is gonna be the next biggest thing in Pangea. Okay, sure, but why my ear? Why not literally any other part of my body? <gasps> uh Ooga Booga, what are you doing? Oh my god, that's literally worse. <gasps> Wait, do you want one too? <laughs> what? Uh, no, no, no. So apparently today is April 20th, aka 420. And like, I didn't know what that meant because when I was five, I knocked an industrial sized soup can on my head, which put me in a coma for 12 years of my life. Anyways, I Googled what it meant and apparently it's a whole day about Mary Jauna. Now I speak American and I don't know who Mary Jauna is. So I put it into Google Translate. It tried translating it from Spanish, which said weed, but I'm like, that sounds fake. Why would people celebrate getting weeds? They're ugly and annoying. So I translated it from French and apparently it means marriage Joanna. Now I only know one Joanna. Joanna. It's the drive through work at my local Taco Bell I've always had a crush on. And today is 420, so... Hi, is this Joanna? Yes. Will you marry me? No. Oh my gosh, hey there. Uh, I just wanted to quickly remind you that babies are literally DISGUSTING! Therefore, I'm a baby hater. Yay! Um, I want to take every single baby and put it on a boat, and then send that boat into the middle of the ocean. And then when those babies are done crying and pooping themselves, they can go freaking swim to the shore and live off coconuts on an island or something, so I never have to hear them again. Also guys, when I was 12, a bird pooped on my face, and I thought I was gonna die of salmonella. I was inhaling a cheese string when my doorbell rang. Now, I installed a video doorbell last week, so I checked the live feed, and there was a box waiting for me. I wasn't expecting any mail other than a shipment of $20,000 of cans of baked beans that I ordered last night from Yugoslavia at 4am, but it couldn't be that. I went to go check it out, and when I opened it, it was full of money. Like, a million dollars worth. I was like, where did this come from? Until I heard a tiny little voice coming from down below. What? You don't remember selling pictures of me online to random people? I was like, oh, I forgot about the feet pics. So, you gotta give me some of that, right? Uh, I banged my toe as hard as I could like 30 times against the wall. Anyways, now that I'm rich, I wanted to buy a mansion, so I went to the one place where everyone buys homes. Home Depot! I went to customer services, and I told the lady, Hi, I'd like a home, please. And they're like, Sir, this is a hardware store. And that's when my inner Karen came out. I screamed, What the f- <gasps> I've made it a year and a half on this app without swearing. I'll be gosh diddly dang if I slip up today. I love you, Jesus! 
I woke up in the middle of the night wanting a Travis Scott burger. So I drove over to McDonald's to get one and I ordered it. Do you have the Travis Scott burger? Oh, yeah, we do. But then after I ordered it, I pulled up to the window and they shoved a Q-tip in my nose. And that's when I realized I had sleep driven to a COVID testing site. And then she handed me a sheet of paper that told me I was positive for thick butt cheek syndrome. My tires popped from the weight of my behind. And when I managed to squeeze out of the car, I looked and saw how bad my big badonkadonk was. If I were to do the WAP dance right now in this street, the gravitational force would pull the sun so detrimentally close to the earth that everything would catch on fire and the earth would split in half. So I drove home and I went inside and hid in my basement so I could never cause an apocalypse. But I was missing something. I still never got my Travis Scott burger. So I grabbed some candles and I began a ritual to summon Travis Scott himself. I said out loud, Travis Scott. Are the candles burning, my lord? And then all of a sudden, he appeared out of thin air and said two words. It's me! Ah! Oh. Uh, ow! Do your knees pop? Try Dudupril and live a better tomorrow today. I mean, okay. Side effects include... Death? Bleeding. Uh, wait, uh, what? <laughs> joint pain, knee popping. I thought the whole point is that my knees don't crack. What? Knee pain, knee discomfort. You may feel the uncontrollable <gasps> urge to go into your fridge and then grab a lemon and get in your car and drive over to Walmart and look for an innocent elderly person and throw the lemon at their head. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Do not drive while on Dudupril. But it just made me drop. Uh-uh, uh-uh. I'm walking home then. I'm walking. Blindness may occur at any time. Some patients forget English and only speak Spanish. Esto es ridículo. ¿Por qué? In 90% of cases, your knees will fall off. However, popping is guaranteed to stop at this stage. ¡Qué mierda! Last night I went to Chuck E. Cheese to lie and say it's my birthday to get free pizza. And it worked, baby! But the place was terrifying and the food was even scarier. And after a few bites, I started feeling sick like I had worms in my stomach. So I got up and I stumbled out of the restaurant and I went home. Then the next day, I scheduled an emergency Zoom doctor's visit and he told me that I'm lactose intolerant. And I was like, what the hell? I don't lactose, I got all 10, baby! But then he told me to put my feet away and I was like, you're right, you should be paying me for this, not the other way around, buddy. And then he started telling me you can't eat pizza anymore. But his video started to cut out, but it's okay, because I know what lactose intolerances. I can't have bread anymore! So I got rid of all my bread and dumped all of that fart food right in the trash. And then I grabbed some milk and chugged nothing but pure milk for a few days. And you know what? It was really good for a bit until I started feeling a storm brewing ten times stronger than what Chuck E. Cheese did to me. So I immediately ran to the bathroom and... So apparently lactose intolerance is the milk one, but at least I don't lactose, baby! Today I walked to Starbucks to get the brand new Ariana Grande drink. Cause the Travis Scott meal sucked fat buttholes. So I'm curious to see what Ariana drinks. I finally got there and when I ordered I said, I'd like the Grande please. And they were like, the Grande what? And I said, the Grande. And they were like, the Grande what? And then I said, the Ariana Grande! And then they said, okay, that'll be 69.69. And I was shocked at how expensive it was, but I paid. And they brought my drink out and I waited until I was home to drink it. And when I was finally ready, I uncovered my eyes to look at it and it was just a Grande cup with a bug in it! And I screamed out of horror and I grabbed the cup and I ran to the street to dispose of it and I winded up my throw and I watched as it flew through the air and then came crashing down and I watched as the Ariana Grande drink bled across the pavement with the bug's life flashing before its eyes. So overall, I would rate the Ariana Grande drink at Starbucks a 3 out of 10. I accidentally swallowed the bug and it started feasting on my internal organs. Have you ever noticed how almost every label has these weird dots and color codes? These are on everything from pudding boxes to taco seasoning packets. They're on granola bar boxes and they're even on chocolate chip bags. Even my delicious cottage cheese has it too. I thought to myself, what do they mean? So I've spent the past month researching it trying to crack the code. My first thoughts were that it had to do with the color, so I wrote down two codes from two packages down. But then my marker died, so I killed it. Then I colored in the shapes to match the secret code, but I didn't find anything, so I ripped it up. That's what I realized. It's not a color puzzle. It's a crossword puzzle. The code always appears in either four or six circles or squares. So I wrote it out again, and I knew exactly what filled the spaces this time. Debbie Ryan. If you don't believe me, here is her with pistachio pudding has the code. Here's chocolate chip cookies on her snap story. Chocolate chips have the code. And finally, here's her with a granola bar. The granola bar has the code. Why would she do this? What if she's trying to brainwash all of us by placing these subtle codes so she can take over our brains and- uh, ah! So I was making my delicious quarantine meal of tortilla chip cereal, but as soon as I took a bite, I dropped a piece on the ground and my freaking dog ate it. And I thought to myself, isn't it weird how us humans just live with animals? Like somehow a wolf evolved into this cute little rat looking thing, even though she wouldn't survive a day in the wild. But as I was making this TikTok, I was like, wait, where's Kobe? And I caught her in the corner of my eye running directly towards the road. I ran so fast, they canceled the Olympics because they knew I would just win everything. Anyway, she was almost at the street and to my left was a car coming. I thought to myself, am I willing to lay down my life for this little rat? 
rap. And I was like, nah, I'm not ready to meet Bob Ross and Grumpy Cat in heaven. So I just let the car turn her into a pancake. Of course I would say for are you crazy? I lunged in front of the car and shoved her out of the way, but um uh so it turns out the car was parked the whole time and like was not going anywhere. Hey, it's not my fault that I have poor depth perception. <laughs> I recently mentioned that I have a chunk of dry ice from buying human organs off of the black market and the TikTok blew up, which is not what I wanted because now the FBI is gonna be on my ass. Cause this morning I was watching how snails make love when my MacBook camera turned on and usually it's just my FBI agent checking in to see if I'm doing okay mentally. But this time they messaged me and said, did you really buy human organs off of the- And I said, no, you dumb one, that brain doo-doo head. It's a TikTok. When have I ever made a serious TikTok? It's all just a joke cause I'm painfully bored with too much time on my hands and I just write down whatever comes to my brain and somehow people enjoy it. It makes me really happy. But then I one hate comment and it ruins my whole week. And then my FBI agent told me go to therapy. And I was like, damn, you're right. And I went to bed. Don't buy organs on the black market, or your FBI agent will make you go to therapy. I was so bored today, I googled myself, and I noticed there was a tab saying Ben of the Week height. And it said that I was 5'7", which is slander because I'm 6 feet tall. Look, I literally measured it. I am 6 feet tall! Like, I can drop my phone with a Caseify case for my head, and it survived. Not only did my phone survive with my Caseify case, but the case is super fun, too. They have lots of different designs, which are super fun. And, like, look, here's Dula Peep with hers. Look at me, my twin, Dula Peep. But I have this fun shipping label one, which I tried putting in a mailbox once, but then I realized it's not a real shipping label, it's just a case, and I had to fish my phone out of the mailbox with talks. Anyway! I highly recommend getting one since I see some of y'all raw dogging that iPhone with no protection, no case, no nothing. And they come in super fun packaging and have free little sanitizing wipes for you stinky mamas. Anyways, you can get 20% off with code 20 high Ben. Okay, bye! Ever since Trump got banned off of every social media platform, I actually discovered the last way that he's been able to whine to his little Trump stands since he can't be on Twitter anymore. And you're probably wondering, what is it? Well, last January, my number got leaked online and someone took my number and gave it to the Trump campaign. So they've been sending me nonstop texts, emails, and calling me like once a week. Oh, support Donald Trump. And whenever they call me, I, um... Ah! politely decline. Anyway, since he's been banned, it's been real quiet. Until one day I was drinking Red Bull out of my frog mug on the balcony when a piece of paper hit me in the head from the sky and I saw a carrier pigeon flying away. Anyways, I looked at the note and it was a note from Trump himself saying he's bored and losing his job and needs $50. <laughs> so you know what I did? I went looking for the perfect pigeon to send back to the President of the United States and I found a strong young pigeon with just a dash of rabies. I showed it a picture of Trump, pointed it in the direction of the White House, and I said, fly baby, fly. So I dropped out of school to become a TikToker, but that won't stop me from joining random Zoom classes and destroying them. First, I hacked a math teacher study session. She was not happy to see me. Show me yourself or you're out. We have infiltrated your computer. You must press Alt F for- Get out. Get out. You'll get out. This is my okay, Zoom now. I'm stopping the Zoom. I'm stopping you. You're done. <laughs> <laughs> okay, then I decided I would impersonate a Zoom tech support agent and get a teacher to end their Zoom class. Hi there, Mr. Bankston. Uh, I'm with uh, Zoom technical support. And we've been getting some DDoS attacks on certain uh, streams. And they've got like your, your Minecraft password, your Roblox password. Uh, so uh, we might need uh, this uh, this meeting to restart. I don't actually have Minecraft or any of that. They're currently on uh, Minecraft servers impersonating you um, from what the IT department has told me. Okay, and you're not going to join it after I restart it? Right? No, absolutely not. So I need everybody to log off. I'm going to end the meeting. <laughs> Dang it, we're out of time. But if you want to see them freak out, the link to the YouTube video is in my bio. If we take some group pictures together and you only post the ones where I look like Danny DeVito got possessed by a demon, let me tell you one thing. You are toxic. Second of all, that same demon is going to emerge from my body and possess you to delete those pictures right now. There's no reason why you get to look like an insta baddie while I have to look like a sleep paralysis demon! Remember on Vine when people would get injured and then go viral for no reason? Well, I could be the first person on TikTok. So that put me in a coma for about 50 years. And the first thing I did when I woke up was check if the TikTok of me getting hit by a car went viral. But I found out the TikTok was no more. It was replaced by Vine 2000. Anyways, I was feeling hungry and super skinny after not eating for five decades. So I checked what was in the fridge. There was some pizza with mold on it, but mold just adds extra flavor. So I ate it. After my mold meal, I decided to wander around the empty wasteland. I was skating around, but then started to feel lonely because humans went extinct from COVID-70. But then I realized this is the future. I'm sure they have time travel. I said, hey Siri, do you have time travel? And she was like, yes, yeah, stupid, it's the future. What do you want to go to? And I decided to go to a date that would change history. November 13th. I teleported into a Walmart and went to go look for the Gummy Bear album. I looked on every shelf, but I was a year too early. I told Siri, Pass me the rock. Pick my dribble up. This
this morning when I woke up, I reached over to my light to turn it on, and it didn't. At first, I thought the bulb died because it's $4 from Ikea, but then I looked at my iPad and it didn't charge overnight, and I realized I don't have any power. So I grabbed four blankets and wrapped myself up to conserve heat, even though I accidentally left two candles burning overnight. Oops. Uh. I was still cold. So I decided to go upstairs and make myself a hot beverage to stay warm. And I can make coffee, but that's literally bean water. Uh. Or I can make matcha, which is just Shrek's ashes. So I ended up grabbing the matcha because I hate coffee. And I went to grab a cup, but they were all freaking dirty and gross. So I boiled some water in my kettle, which apparently <laughs> Americans don't have. Like, let me know if you have a tea kettle or if that's just a British thing. Love. Anyways. Anyways, I poured some matcha and then the water after it. And then I went to grab the cup and I burned my hand on the glass, which was really fun. And I didn't have any cream because the fridge was warm from the electricity being out. So I took my blankets off and I gave it a test. And mama, let me tell you, it tasted like if dirt had a butthole. I ended up spitting it out. And then I poured the rest out on the concrete. But the water had rehydrated Shrek's ashes and he came back to life. And I drove to Walmart today because I wanted to buy walls. <laughs> okay, anyways, I was walking around Walmart to find a pumpkin, and I found a WAP pumpkin. And I had to take a seat and gather the thoughts in my head. <laughs> anyways, I was looking through the store, and I found the candle section, and this purple one smelled really good, so I bit into it for no reason. I don't know why I did it. And it tasted like dirt, so I put it back, but I realized it would spread COVID, so I just bought it. Then, I got a pumpkin carving kit and a wig for fun. And then, finally, a pumpkin, and I left the store, actually having paid for my items from Walmart for once. And I went home and wondered how pumpkins are grown, and imagine if people had to give birth to pumpkins. <laughs> anyways, I opened the carving tools, and then and I flew out and almost stabbed me. But then I decided to make an Among Us pumpkin and began cutting into it. And it took a lot of work and it was kind of nasty touching pumpkin guts. Ooh, we're out of time on TikTok, but I'm going to post the finished results on my Instagram at Ben of the Week. Okay, bye. I was at the Tokyo Olympics gym today, training for all the sports I'm gonna get a gold medal in. But in the middle of me training, this Edna Mode looking person came over to me, and I thought they were gonna say, you aren't allowed to put the big balls in your shirt and steal them. So I was getting ready to sprint away, but they actually just complimented my phone case. And I was like, oh, did you mean my case by case with fun little moons on it that keeps my phone safe while also looking cute? Available in so many fun, different, customizable designs. But I realized I didn't actually say it out loud, so I was like, thanks. And then they asked if my phone case had moons on it, because I like astrology. And I was like, mm, yeah. And then they were like, like, oh, what sign are you? And then I told them I'm a virgin. Oh, and, and then I realized I meant to say Virgo. And I just made this person think I've never gotten any action. Anyways, you can get 15% off your very own Caseify case with the code 15 Ben. They are great, and I highly recommend. I'm going to go cry in the corner now. Bye. Valentine's Day is in exactly one month, and I'm not letting you be sad and single like me. So, I made a list of three ways you can easily get a bang. The first and best method is to search up their Spotify or Apple Music and look at what their top songs are. And then you can take their top songs and put it on your story and pretend like you have the same music taste. Then they'll see it and you can tell them, why yes, I love a pilot's license by Olivia Mosquito. The second method is to buy a billboard asking your crush out, but that's kind of expensive. So finally, the third method is to post TikToks in front of your house, making sure the street sign is visible in the background. Then, when you get home, I just like to leave the door unlocked and post things that would really attract some new friends. This will invite plenty of new people to come to your house and meet you. Like, there's this mysterious hooded figure that took all my stuff yesterday. I considered it a Valentine's gift from me to them. And I think we might have a spark between us. I was picking the ticks out of my dogs first so I could collect them and inject them with acid until they pop. But just before I could even get to doing that, my phone went off. And when I checked it, my friends had invited me to go rollerblading with them. So I dropped what I was doing and I met them at the roller derby rink. Now I paid $10 to rent some skates, but listen, these babies were impossible to put on. And when I stood up, it felt like I had fettuccine noodles for legs. But it was actually really fun, except there was a small child who kept trying to chase me and I'm allergic to small children. So I tried to avoid him at all costs. But then he got too close to me and I ran him over. And in the distance, I heard some lady who I think was his mom screaming at me about her little overgrown feet. I so I left the roller rink and escaped into the mall, but I could still hear her screaming in the distance, so I started running. And then that's when I saw a security guard and told him that there was a psychopath chasing me. And thankfully, he snuck me out of the mall, and um, turns out she got arrested later for biting an employee. So... <laughs> So I was trying to watch that Luca movie on this sketchy website until I saw this ad that said some lady named Gertrude was a hot single in my area. And I thought, oh my god, it's a heat wave. I need to get Gertrude hydrated before she gets heat stroke. I clicked the picture and immediately 20 programs started downloading on my computer. And I was like, wow, Gertrude must be in STEM or computer science or something. Then all of a sudden I looked down and I had a text from Gertrude and she said that she needs fluids immediately. So I told her that I'm coming and I asked her where. And after she gave me the address, I got in my car and I drove to the address, which happened to be in Ikea. But anyway, she said to come to the bedding center. 
section and my GPS took me to the exact room, but no one was there and I was getting a little bored. So I decided to lay down for a quick nap. But when I woke up, Ikea was closed and I got up and tried to leave, but that's when I realized my wallet and keys were stolen. And I was really freaked out, but I found the exit. And as soon as I got outside, I saw, I saw some figures standing behind the trees. He started approaching me and I was like, oh man, I'm sorry, was that your girl? It was too late because the man was angry and he attacked me. <laughs> I was FaceTiming my best friend, Arbita Grande. And I was telling her I was bored. And that's when she told me to go on the dark side of Roblox. And I was like, how does Roblox have a dark side? It's a game made for toddlers that just made poopy in their little diapy. But I've always wanted to join a cult or like the Illuminati. So I decided I'll do it. I told my FBI agent that watches me that I might be doing something bad. And that I'd make it up to him by promising not to buy uranium off of the deep web anymore. So after I got his permission, I grabbed my laptop and logged on. First, I was climbing this tower. Oh my God, yo, X Games. My body crumbled like a Nature Valley granola bar. Then I transformed into Randy Rodriguez and had a dance party. And then people told me to go on something called Piggy. And apparently it's like a horror game on Roblox. So I played it anyways. And good lord, Peppa Pig started attacking each other. We're out of time. But if you want to see the darkest side of Roblox, the link to the YouTube videos in my bio. If we're talking and uh, you sent me one of these emojis. <laughs> The conversation is now over, okay? I can smell the local coming from you and it smells absolutely disgusting. You might think I'm crazy for cutting people off because they use a certain emoji. Well then call me lovely peaches because I will go crazy! I was screaming into the void because I had dropped 10 pounds of protein powder on my pinky toe until I realized I'm almost at 5 million followers on here. Now, I can't even count to 5 because last week I crashed into a telephone pole while going too hard to telephone show. Oh my god! <laughs> Which gave me brain damage and memory loss. Oh my gosh, I just realized I'm almost at 5 million followers. I want to celebrate by eating 5 million olives because I love them so much. But when I opened my fridge, I only had one jar. So obviously I called a place where all olives come from. Olive Garden. They said to stop calling or they'll call the police. And I told them, if your breadsticks really are unlimited, then you should act like it and I won't light my table on fire in a fit of rage. But then they hung up and I realized I'd burned down every other olive garden in my city. So I thought I'll make my own olive garden. I drove over to an old abandoned restaurant, planted some olive trees and decided to dedicate my life to harvesting the olives until I have 5 million to share with you guys. So come on down to Olive Garden. Listen, I don't want to get sued. Hey there, what's up? Just wanted to quickly remind you today to drink some water and DO NOT SAY that water tastes disgusting. It's water, you idiot. It doesn't have a taste. There's a reason why your forehead looks like the topographical map of Utah, and that's because you don't drink water. Oh, are you a little baby who needs a little baby bottle of juice? No, you idiot. Drink the freaking earth juice. I've been quarantined for 18 days now. I know it's only supposed to be 14 days, but I went and got tested a week ago and they never called me back. Did they maybe call me three times to tell me the results and I declined it because I have phone anxiety? Maybe. At least I got a free mask. Anywho, I'm sitting here after waking up at 8 p.m. because my sleep schedule is worse than the song Dance Monkey. And I thought to myself, if I woke up one morning and didn't feel too good and then all of a sudden I just pass away like that, like bada bing, bada boom, gone. No one, literally no one would know. My local Taco Bell might wonder why no one orders five chalupas in one order anymore. Or maybe my dog will eat me and realize she doesn't have an owner and then leave the house to start a new life. And then she's driving to work one day and someone stops her car and says, hey, is that a dog driving that car? And then it hit me that it would likely be months until someone discovered me and I'd probably be covered in wasps and maggots and- Hey, that got really dark. Do you know the plural term for platypus is platypi? They have venomous claws. Anyways, I'm gonna go cry now. Bye. <laughs> I was at the dentist getting a piece of road removed from my mouth because last week I was on a leisurely walk when I saw a piece of chocolate on the ground and I was like, oh, a dog could eat that and get sick and also free chocolate. So I popped it in my mouth, no questions asked, only to discover that it wasn't chocolate, but was in fact tar from a road that they were paving. So anyways, they were taking it out when I saw something weird on the TV screen. It was like hypnotism or something. I could barely stay awake. Dad. Next thing I knew, I was frolicking through a field of flowers while Gummy Bear played in the disc. <gasps> All of a sudden, I woke up in the middle of nowhere. My mouth felt really funny. I opened up my mouth to see that they had stolen all of my teeth. I fell to the ground and cried as I realized I'll never be able to eat tortilla chips or smile ever again. In that very moment of despair, a meteor landed right in front of me, sending chunks flying. Out of curiosity, I picked one up and it sent me back in time to five seconds before. So I picked up a piece of time travel rock, popped in my mouth, and next thing I knew... Oh my god, it's closed. Uh, hey Siri, call Wendy's. Killing Wendy. No, 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 no. 
Um, I said cancel. Would you like to cancel? Yes, yes. Canceling your passport and birth certificate. What? No! How do you even have permission to do that? Permission to leak your feed pics? My feeds? What? Sending feed pics to everyone in your contacts. <laughs> How are you even doing this? This is illegal. Something illegal is happening? Alerting the FBI. Yeah, something illegal is happening. You just blew up that Wendy's. Okay, should I send this to the FBI? I just blew up a Wendy's. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Did you say absolutely? Message send. <laughs> Would you like to use your pics from the mugshot trend for when you go to prison? <laughs> no. Kidnap Queen Elizabeth? No, not Queen Elizabeth. <laughs> Hey, I don't, I don't mean to interrupt you. I was just wondering what the Wi-Fi password is. Oh, we don't need that here. We have plenty of horses. <laughs> yeah, um, see, I was just, I was just gonna quickly check. Uh, I was just gonna check if my friend's uh, coronavirus test came back positive. So if I could just get the Wi-Fi. Shut your damn mouth right now. Mommy says the internet turns your brain to mice. I'm sorry, I was just gonna use my uh, my data, but I just tried calling 911 and it says there's no service. So, uh, <laughs> Hey, uh, am I allowed to leave? Can, can I go? Can oh, I of course you are, silly. I was just joking. If you want to leave, the bus comes soon. <laughs> okay, uh, thanks for having me. Uh, I'm gonna... No, or you can always take one of the horses. <laughs> <laughs> hey, guys. I'm really sad to announce that my dog, Kobe, is gone. Because she's a freaking sheep now. Look at how long her fur is. This pandemic has closed every single dog grooming place in my town. Leaving my dog usually looks like a rat into a sheep. But I finally found one that was open. It's me. I have a pair of scissors, so I'm going to give her a haircut right now. I was about to make the first snip when I realized how bad the haircut that I gave myself was. So I decided to leave it to the pros. I put her leash on, headed out the door, and popped her in the car. Now, we were driving to the groomers, but there was a Karen driving right in my butt cheeks. Because I was going so slow. But, like, that's my baby. I'm going to drive slow. So I dropped some nails up my window and Karen hit the ditch. Anyways, it was finally time to drop her off. I pulled her out of the car and told her she's the goodest girl. And then I dropped her off. I cried a lot driving home, but if you want to see what she looks like shaved, I'll post her on my Instagram story at Ben of the Week. Today I went to go see Billie Eilish at Coachella, but before she came on, there was this dude wearing a big sparkly onesie who opened for her that kept staring at me, and I was thinking to myself, what's up, do you have a staring problem, buddy? But anyways, he did a little dancey dance thing, and Shrek was in the audience and seemed to love it. But his cameraman kept getting in the way and then turned to me, and the next thing I knew, rewind that. He put me on the big screen, and I freaked out and went behind the cameraman and started unplugging random cables from his camera, and it turned off the video on the screen. But anyways, then Billie Eilish came on, and kept invading my personal space and staring at me and i was like do celebrities never get taught that staring is rude why are you yelling at me but then she did her little dancey dance and left the stage and i took a golf cart home from coachella and when i woke up the next morning i checked my phone to see a dm from billy herself asking if i was at her show with a winky face and i replied no silly billy here's a restraining order leave me alone and i went back to bed I was inhaling Lucky Charms in my desolate room for breakfast when I realized it is time for a whole room makeover. But I didn't want any boring room. I wanted a complete Minecraft room makeover, baby. I didn't have any supplies or Minecraft merch, so I Ubered over to Target and I went to the home section and I got like a pillowcase, a blanket, a whole freaking comforter that's Minecraft themed. And then I paid for it. I went home and I prepared for the transformation. I took the old pillowcase off and slipped on my brand new Minecraft reversible pillowcase and hung up a Minecraft pickaxe above my bed so I can defend myself if someone robbed my house and even though it's foam and someone robbing me will probably have something not as soft as foam it's still pretty cool anyways i put the comforter on the bed and then i hung up a creeper blanket above my bed but i was missing one final touch i saw a tiktok a while ago of someone minecraftifying their window so i grabbed some tape and followed the pattern from the minecraft window pane and then boom minecraft windows baby wait oh we're out of time but if you want to see everything i added and how it turned out the link to the youtube video is in my bio <laughs> I had just finished doodling all over my arms for five hours straight while watching the Minions movie. But then my arms started to burn and I was like, it's fine, it's washable ink. So I quickly ran upstairs to my bathroom to wash it off and it was permanent. The ink was now fused to my skin and I could feel the doodles entering my bloodstream. But I got distracted and thought, doodle is such a funny sounding word. Like you can't say doodle angrily. <laughs> and then I realized my arms had fallen off. They were just on the floor staring back at me. How am I going to deal with the spider colony in my bathroom? I'm going to have to eat them to get rid of them. Actually, that's 
that wasn't too bad. It's a little bit crunchy and a little bit salty. How am I gonna drive to Taco Bell now? How am I gonna shop for mayonnaise? How will I put on hand sanitizer? Wait, wait, I don't need hand sanitizer because I have no hands. I won't be catching no viruses. Hi, I'm Ben, and this is why you should chop off your arms. I was about to devour the souls of some poor shrimp when I realized they still have their heads on. So I ripped the head off and then ate the shrimp, but then I remembered it's only a matter of time before the FBI catches me for replacing their website with a chicken wing, chicken wing video. So I decided I'll make a shrimp army. So I put the shrimp heads in a bag and then I drove home and cut some lemons and put the shrimp heads on some sticks attached to the lemons so that they would stand up. Then I placed the soldiers all around my house and they were all standing guard ready to protect me. I felt so safe with my shrimp army watching guard. So I went to the kitchen to make a salmon burger, but then I remembered salmon is seafood, shrimp is seafood. My shrimp army turned around in shock and horror when they saw what I was about to do. I tried telling them I'm sorry, but they were angry and were inching closer towards me. I didn't know what they were gonna do with me, so I picked them up by their shrimp antennas and spun them like a lasso above my head, and I flung them into the sky. The battle had been won. Every year since, I visit the graves where the battle took place. I pay my respects and apologize for being so shellfish. <laughs> I woke up this morning after having a nightmare where zombie Shawn Mendes and zombie Camila Kabubu were trying to eat me. I woke up terrified and reached for my water bottle full of Red Bull, but when I looked at my hand, there was like some spot that I'd never seen before. I quickly searched to see what it was and it said that it was cancer, but like, I'm a Virgo, so that made no sense. Anyways, I was still a little bit spooked, so I sent a picture of it to my doctor, and then I carried on with my day, which was watching three seasons of one show and then playing 47 games of Fortnite until 6 a.m. But the next morning, I woke up and it was like itchy and bubbling, and I was like, okay, this is a demon. And just then, I got a text from my doctor and he was like, like, did you mean to send me a Roblox meme? And I was like, uh, oopsie. <laughs> so I sent him the actual picture and went back to bed. But when I woke up, there was like 30 more and I was like, ah, and I started crying and they were on my face too. And my doctor texted me that they were a flesh eating insect and I cried some more until one fell on my mouth. And it had a little crunch and honestly kind of tasted like bacon. So like I ate a few more and next thing you know, I'm spooning these bugs in my mouth like it's Lucky Charm cereal. Today I texted my crush that I love her and want a relationship and I felt like throwing up until she replied with I'm in Lisbon and then she sent the um Portuguese flag I think I don't know I'm not good at geometry but anyways I wanted to surprise her so I booked the next ticket to Lisbon Portugal so I packed up my stuff and went to the airport and it was a 30 hour journey but it was in the name of love and when I landed I realized I should probably get her something as a gift so I walked into a store and came across these very interesting frozen feet in the freezer section and I thought hmm, who would want to suck on feet oh me so I bought them and opened up the box and ate every last Foot. And they tasted like strawberries. I don't know why I was expecting foot flavor. Not that that's what I wanted. But anyways, I got the bright idea to take all the popsicle sticks and make a little fun DIY bracelet out of them with hearts on it. So I did just that, and then the next day, I was gonna give my crush the bracelet. So I went to DM her and asked her to meet up and realized she said I'm a lesbian. I'm a lesbian. So, One Direction might be making a comeback, because it's their 10-year anniversary, and I, believe it or not, was a little bit of a directioner as a child. Okay, I ran a fan page and had uh, three t-shirts. Anyways, I'm gonna audition to be the fifth member of One Direction since Zayn dipped. I can sing, I can dance, and I'm an excellent songwriter too, believe it or not. I feel like me and Harry Styles would be really good friends too and drink tea together, or I could be his peasant and carry all his bags and stuff for him, but even that would be an honor. Also, my British accent is impeccable. Okay, well, at least I could be their token minority and add some flavor and spice. Even though one time I put two drops of hot sauce on my burrito and I almost upchucked. Anyways, One Direction, please hire me. You don't even have to pay me. All I want is some tortilla chips once a day and someone to watch my dog while we go on tour. Okay, please hire me. Bye. Remember on New Year's Eve when we were all excited for 2020 to start? And then World War II almost started? And we were like, okay, that's the worst thing that's gonna happen this year. And then Australia walked in and said, you know what? I am gonna light on fire. And then immediately after that, we lost Kobe. And we're like, okay, that's enough for this year. But it wasn't because then someone coughed. And the next thing you know, six million people were coughing. And then anything that ever brought anyone joy was canceled. And then after that, we're like, okay, this is too much. I would like to go to bed for the rest of the year. And then boom, murder hornets arrive in North America. Oh, what's that? That's just NASA discovering alternate universes that apparently exist now. And that thing in the sky? Oh yeah, that's an asteroid that almost wiped out humanity. Which at this point wouldn't be a bad thing. Oh yeah, the government also confirmed that they found UFOs, you know, as a little treat. And the year isn't even done yet. It's literally June. Like, what's gonna happen now? <laughs> if you want to see my accurate prediction of what's gonna happen the rest of the year, the link to the YouTube video is in my bio. So it's 4 a.m. and I'm up thinking, do dogs go to heaven? Like, the only dogs that know what happens when they die are all dead. And the ones that come back and get doggy CPR can't speak English to tell us where they went. Like, I need to know if they're okay. That's why I'm teaching my dog English. That way, if she ever sees chocolate in the backyard and eats it, and then freaking dies, and I have to give her mouth-to-mouth -mouth CPR to bring her back to life, then she can tell me where she went, and I'll tell the CIA where all dogs go after they die. And we'll use top-secret technology to open up a portal to their dimension. And I, myself, will travel there and free all the animals. Whoa. Oh my gosh, I'm in freaking animal heaven. 
seven. Look, over there, it's Harambe. Come on, buddy. Oh my gosh, and over there's Grumpy Cat. I forgot you died. That's so sad. Come on. Wait a second. Is that a squid? I hate squids. Just as I was closing the portal to Animal Heaven, I made sure every last squid was left in there. Then I connected to Heaven's Bluetooth speaker and played Dance Monkey on repeat for the rest of eternity at full volume. <laughs> So I was using the gibberish filter when something really weird happened. Okay, uh, here we go. I am men yo house ben of thou week. <laughs> what does that mean? And I was like, that's a little bit weird. And then my power went out. I was sitting in complete darkness except for a line of text that lit up on my computer that said, I'm right in, in front of you. I thought, am I being hacked? So I grabbed my phone and opened up a iPad and deleted all my Harry Styles fanfics I've been writing since I was in middle school. But then the hacker said, I, I think I love you. So I told him, I don't think it's going to work out. And the hacker replied, if I can't have you, the world can have this. And he had leaked all of my Harry Styles fanfics from when I was 12. Harry Styles grabs your neck and whispers in your ear. I have one direction, but without the D in direction, if you know what I mean. I keep seeing WAP this, WAP that, but I didn't know what it meant. So I texted my grandma and she said, it stands for We All Pray. And I thought that's so wholesome. And there's a dance to it too. So I was learning the dance in my bedroom when I accidentally bonked my head on the floor and gave myself a nosebleed. And as I looked in the mirror, I realized I'm 11 from Stranger Things' older brother, 20. I tried testing out my powers and I made a Tic Tac levitate. And then I tried to lift the humongous weight on my shoulders of living with the world's number one biggest fat as juicy as but, uh, anyways, it didn't work. But now that I have powers, I teleported myself to the aquarium, specifically the frog section, and I used my powers to smuggle some frogs out of there. And my backpack was full of frogs, but the security guard caught me, and I didn't have enough money to bail myself out, so I started making merch from prison with the frog babies that were taken away from me. And now, the merch is officially out. I designed it myself, and 30% of the proceeds are going to charity. So yeah, come bail me out of frog prison. We got phone cases. Hey, no phones in prison! <laughs> Never mind. Ma'am, I'm so sorry, but your son, he's lactose intolerant. No! No! Ma'am, we live in the Milky Way galaxy. He'll die here. <laughs> Mom, don't let them take me. We have to deal with this immediately. I'm so sorry. Initiating launch sequence. Four. So today was April Fools and I got a doorbell notification, which I thought was strange because I'm not expecting any packages. And when I checked it, I saw a box sitting outside my house. And I was like, what the heck is a baguette? That sounds like the opposite of a, you know what I'm talking about. Anyways, I picked it up and brought it inside and realized it makes vegetable pasta. And I was so excited. So I opened it up, but there was no baguette. There was just my hair. And I started panicking because I was like, how did they get my human hair? And that's when I realized that a month ago I cut my own hair and put it online as a real Michael Jackson wig and sold it to someone for $5,000. But they probably got my address from the return address on the package. Anyways, I looked in the hair and found a note saying I need to lock my door because... never actually told anyone this, but me and Zendaya have been secretly dating for the past three months. But she started getting really overprotective and told me that if she ever catches me watching Jesse again, she'll light my dog on fire. So I did what I had to do and I ended it. Anyways, I hate being single, so I went on the one secret website where all celebrities go to find love. I grabbed my laptop and logged on to Omegle. The first person I got paired with was this Indian man and I convinced him I was Baby Ariel. My name is Baby Ariel. I don't know if you've heard of me. Baby Ariel. Okay, you're on TikTok. Uh. My name is Arun. You could be ba my hey, baby Arun. Arun. I could be baby yeah. Ariel and you could be baby Arun. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> <laughs> then after that, I asked this random dude for his hand in marriage and... Your hand in marriage, please. Instead of my hand, can I give my foot? Yeah, that's even better. Can I see your foot? Dude, I don't know how to tell you this, but you're like, I'm a double amputee. Are you serious? Crap, run of time, but if you want to see what happened next, the link to the YouTube videos in my bio. So I think I have a stalker and it's starting to freak me out. It started a month ago when I'd accidentally showed my address on my story. I deleted it immediately, but a few days later, my doorbell rang in the middle of the night. Then a week later, I found a Nintendo DS outside my house that said, hello, Benjamin. And then a week after that, I found one inside my bathroom while I was showering. And it said, see you soon. But first of all, I don't even know where he's getting all these Nintendo DSs from. Like, they don't even make those mama jamas anymore. Personally, if I was invading someone's privacy, I'd use sticky notes or something. And 
anyways, I decided to change my front door code to a really secret number. One, two, three, four. But then the next day, I heard the door unlock, and then someone came downstairs, and they were in a black hoodie and black jeans, and I thought they were gonna kidnap me, but I welcome the stalker. I haven't had a human interest in me in months, so I asked them to come cuddle with me. But they looked so caught off guard when I asked them to come under the blankets. And then I guess I out-creeped the creep when I tried to lick his toes. And that's when he ran away. My stalker doesn't even want me, bruh. Today, I went into Panda Express, and I said, Uh, cook me a panda and make it express. But all they had was tofu, so I walked out. And when I got home, I started eating my non-panda food, and I started choking on a fortune cookie. And I screamed, ah, I'm choking. And then I dramatically fell off my chair, knocking over everything, and I was gone. Okay, so I faked that entire situation to see if anyone would actually come save me, and I looked out the window, and there was no ambulance, and I went downstairs, and Zendaya wasn't at the door, ready to bring me back to life with mouth-to-mouth -mouth CPR. And I started panicking, because anything could happen, and no one would save me. Like, I could be doing the Macarena, and my heart could just be like, peace out. And no one would see me dramatically fall to the ground. Or an intruder could come rob me of all my Minecraft decor and I could be screaming and no one would save me. And then I realized nothing really matters. So I put on my inflatable frog costume and I ran down the street at 3 a.m. I saw some man in the bush giving tattoos and I let him give me one for $4 because my brain is spiraling. So if you want to see the tattoos I got, I just posted them on my Instagram. Okay, bye. So I've been waiting for this day for a month now. That's because today is the delivery day for my brand new iPhone 12 Pro Max. 500, oh, frick, iPhone 12 Pro Max 500. 12 gigabytes specific blue color and yeah it was two thousand dollars but it's got really good speakers so i bring it in the shower and it's really fun to just ah! oh, no. Oh, no. hey guys so actually now i have an android um it was all i could afford after paying two thousand dollars just to break my iphone but um it's really fun it um what are those monstrosities absolutely not Hey guys, so now I'm using the Vizio Smart TV that I found behind a dumpster after walking through a local junkyard. And the screen is really big, but that's okay, because it's great for watching TikToks, and I really love- Oh, fuck. Oh, no. Oh, no. So now I'm coming to you live from my brand new Sunbeam Ultra Crisp 2-in-1 toaster, and it's actually kind of better than the Android. But, uh, the phone disconnected again. Let me fix that real quick. Oh, no. Hey guys, so I'm actually coming to you live from hell now, where I'm currently burning. Do you ever scroll through Instagram all day like a Coco Melon iPad baby until you see that you're somehow on Christian Mingle and you've matched with the mom from Wizards of Waverly Place? But then when you switch back to Instagram, it's down and you're like, uh, what am I gonna do now? Well, that happened to me. So I thought, well, may as well join the Amish. So I went to their website, which I was surprised they even had in the first place. And I signed myself up and gave them my address and my social security number, which I didn't really know why they needed that. But anyways, later that day, someone rang my doorbell and slipped a business card under the door. And when I picked it up, it had a number on it. So I texted the number and I I decided to ask them, so what's it like being in the Amish? And they replied, we are in Spain. And I was like, oh my god, I didn't know they had the Amish in Spain. So you know what I did? I booked the next flight to Barcelona to try and join them. But when I finally got there, I turned my phone off airplane mode and the text came in. And it turns out he actually said they are in pain, not Spain, because they have no electricity. And, well, sucks to be y'all, I'm in Spain. Ole, 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 ole. I was enjoying some olives and yogurt when a piece of paper slipped through my mail slot. And when I went to go check it, a huge box flew through the slot and hit me in the head. That's when I remembered I ordered this game called Incoherent from Amazon at like 2am. But nevertheless, I was so excited to play it. But I realized I don't have any friends around me to play with. So I decided to call some of my besties instead. I dialed the number and I was like, hey bestie. And they said, this is Taco Bell. So I was like, okay, first round, Nick Key Menage. Please don't call this number again. And I said, no silly, it's Nicki Minaj. What about Press Feet Tin? Yeah, we're taking your phone number to the police. <laughs> I was like, no, it's breastfeeding, duh. The police are really coming home. Hi there, you're probably not gonna believe me, but you're- Better watch the first ever TikTok that's longer than a minute. And if you don't believe me, well, here is a timer, and I will give you a participation medal at the end. Okay, let's begin. But in the meantime, here's some monkey facts to keep you entertained. Okay, monkeys can understand written numbers and can even count. They can also understand basic parts of arithmetic and even, in rare cases, multiplication? Okay, next, um, Uncle Fat is a morbidly obese monkey in Thailand who gorged himself on junk food and soda that tourists had left behind. As the leader of this troop, the gluttonous monkey had subordinate monkeys bringing him goodies? Nah, there, there's no way this is real, what? He looked exhausted. Obese monkey Uncle Fatty, who became a star after being sent to fat camp, is missing and feared dead after falling off the wagon. What did I just stumble across? <laughs> <laughs> okay, I've decided to take the rest of the time for this TikTok to do a documentary on Uncle Fatty, so... The Disappearance of Uncle Fatty, a Ben of the Week original. July 8th, 2019. The Sun reports the long-tail macaque... Macaque. <laughs> macaque! 
the long time ago, who ballooned to the size of two monkeys, was sent to a weight loss camp in 2017, but went back to his old ways once home in Bangkok, Thailand. Bangkok. Bangkok. <laughs> Uncle Fatty piled on the weight over his many years after being fed high-calorie food by tourists visiting the Kun Kala Monument. Environmentalists monitoring his progress after weight loss camp say the last time he was seen alive was on February 26. Locals asked the police to check the CCTV footage but have still been unable to identify the body. It is now feared that Uncle Fatty has either become lost, relocated to a new area, or even been killed. The ch- However, with local legends saying the forest reclaims bodies of the monkeys after they die. Aww. Kavinabat Mongol Teka Chat, the president of the We Love Monkey Club. <laughs> no! How is this real? President of the We Love Monkey Club said our staff always saw him sitting in the front of the monument every time they came to feed the pack. But one day, he was just gone. Pause, what is the We Love Monkey Club? Documentary over. We Love Monkey Club. <laughs> oh, it literally doesn't. It there is no We Love Monkey Club. Okay, but what is this video? As you sit here with 20 seconds left on the TikTok clock, did you think this is where this TikTok was gonna go? Did you think you were gonna watch a documentary about a fat monkey in Bangkok, Thailand, and then watch me dance to a song by Cheeky Monkey Club? No, but here we are, and here's your medal. I'm proud of you. Welcome to the family. <laughs> oh my god. What the hell? Okay, so I bought one of those things that lets you FaceTime your dog and shoot treats at them. But today I was looking at the camera and I noticed that she's been taking all her treats behind the couch for some reason. So I went to go see what she was doing with them and um, she's been storing them so that she can pretend like I never gave her one in the first place and ask for more like the fat little bitch she is. And yes, I can call her that because bitch means female dog and she is a female dog. Anyways, I had enough of her scamming me. So I decided to empty out the treat machine and fill it with her least favorite treat. Green beans, baby! I put a bean on the plate and cut it up into small little pieces, and then I loaded it into the machine, and I shot it out at her, and at first she didn't want to eat it, but then she got bored, and she ate them, and I was so happy, because I thought I got her on a diet, until I heard a weird coughing noise come from downstairs. I ran downstairs to see what was happening, and that's when I saw her in my beanbag bed, next to the beans when she had the right I know I got beans in my bed! Today, I was sick of feeling lazy, so I went on the treadmill, walked three steps, and then got off. But as I was folding it up, my anemia hit, and I couldn't hold the treadmill anymore, and it collapsed on me. When I woke up, my arm was trapped underneath the metal, and I couldn't get out. My dog is too stupid to help me, and I couldn't even call for help because my phone was just out of reach, and I turned Siri off because last time I used her, well... Hey Siri, call Wendy's. Killing Wendy. No, 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 no! The only thing within reach was a minion figurine and a fork with a grape on it. First I ate the grape because like, mmm, grapes are delicious. But then it hit me what needed to be done. I put the minion in my mouth so that I wouldn't scream. Then I grabbed the plastic fork and I took my arm off. Wait, does that say emergency release latch? As in like, I did I did not have to sever my, my arm. I did not need to cut off my arm. Today, I hiked up to the Hollywood sign, but there was a fence blocking access to it, so I committed a little bit of a crime, and I managed to get through, and I changed the sign to Holly Boo by covering the W with a B for a boo. Anyways, I was walking down, and I saw helicopters flying overhead, and I was getting kind of nervous, so I ran into the bushes, and I hid from them, because apparently I was on government property, or whatever that means. Anyways, I got an emergency alert on my phone, and when I checked, it said that there was a $2 million bounty for a six-foot man in green, so I realized I'll have to live off the grid forever in these bushes, with my only food being Lady Gaga Oreos that I brought as a snack. Anyways, I managed to sneak away to a swamp, but I heard the choppers getting closer, but that's when I looked in the distance and saw none other than a six-foot man in green in the swamp. I had to act fast, so I grabbed my phone and I dialed 911 and I ratted on Shrek. Anyways, Shrek was arrested and charged with eight felonies and I got a two million dollar reward. So now I'm rich and I bought a mansion. Thanks, Shrek. So, um, I'm freaked out right now because I was looking through my mom's Facebook pictures and in three different pictures from three different trips, there is the same man. I can't tell who he is because, like, the pictures are so blurry but i just got this program and ran it all night that enhances the picture quality and the pictures just finished processing so i'm about to go look i've been sitting in my nightmares is someone here
I was walking around at 3 a.m. in a frog costume so I could feel alive again when I saw a praying mantis on the ground. And I thought those were only in Kung Fu Panda, so I decided to grab a bowl and capture it. After I caught it, I transferred it from the bowl into a bag that I had, and I brought him inside. Apparently, they only eat live insects, and there happened to be a fly on my counter, so I went, yeah! and I knocked him out and grabbed that wench by the ankle and threw him in the bag. And then I found a cockroach, and I was about to feed it to him when I dropped it on my phone. <laughs> Anyways, he ate it, but the bag was still too small, so I went to Petco and got a whole enclosure, and I wanted live crickets, but they were out. So I Ubered home, and I put it together, and I was about to transfer him when I realized I forgot to zip it up, and he escaped! I looked everywhere for him. I looked under my covers. I looked in the bathroom. When I looked at Monty and... Monty, what are you... <laughs> if you want to see what happened next, the link to the YouTube videos in my bio. Ah! I was crying face down on the floor in my plate of taquitos because I can't figure out how to do any TikTok dances, but they look so fun. When I try and follow one, it feels like I'm reading Japanese while blindfolded, but today I'm changing that. It is unacceptable that I have 5.5 million TikTok followers and have never posted a dancing video. So today I'm learning one and I'm not stopping until I get it. I chose to do yodeling Haley's dance to money trees because it just looks so fun and easy. And it's definitely fun, but after sweating so much that I had to change shirts three different times, my conclusion is that it is not easy for me. I got the first part down where it's like, get this dough. But then I watch it over and realize I'm missing a huge part. The facial expressions. I look like I'm in pain when I dance. But I can't be looking like I just ate a candle and haven't gone to the bathroom in two weeks if I want this dance to look good. So I forced myself to smile in the mirror for an hour straight so I don't look constipated. And then I tried the dance again and I got it. Like I actually got it. And I just posted it on this account. So uh, tell me how it did. Today I was flying over North Korea and trying to sleep even though there was a baby screaming behind me because it shat itself. But what really kept me awake was a song started playing that plays in like all those plane crash TikToks. And then the plane started shaking and the seatbelt sign turned off. And the plane was shaking so much that it spilled water all over my no-no square. And I thought if this plane is going down, I'm not about to be found dead looking like I peed myself. So I snuck into the bathroom even though it said seatbelts on. And I grabbed some paper towel and tried to dry it off. But it was shaking so much that I just went back to my seat. And that's when I realized the music was coming from the stupid baby behind me's iPad. Because it knocked its AirPods off from sharding so aggressively. So I tried to lean between the seats to turn it off, but I couldn't reach it, so I called over the flight attendant and asked if we could just throw the child out of the airlock, but she didn't speak English, and just gave me almonds. So I peacefully lost my mind for seven hours, and when I landed, I saw the most nasty little sharder and chased after it because it left its iPad behind, but when I touched it, there was literal baby food on it, and I dropped it and cracked the screen. And then I picked it up again to check if it was working and saw the lock screen, and it jump scared me, and I dropped it again. Whoops! <laughs> So I was going through my local Taco Bell drive-thru when I saw some money had fallen out of a customer's car in front of me. So I pulled up to pick it up and it was $200. And at first I was like, whoa, Canadian money actually does smell like maple syrup. But secondly, they probably need it. I should really leave it behind for them. Psych bitch! I went to Michael's and spent $200 on crap! Cause last time I went to Michael's, I was like a toddler with like three Robux in my bank account. So I walked in and I decided to buy whatever looked cool. I found one of those kits where you break open the geodes. So I grabbed one of those and then there was a bunch of fake fruit. And I saw they had fake bananas, so I bought a fake banana. But when I went to pay, the cashier found a bite mark on my banana and asked me if I still wanted the bitten banana, but I bought the bitten banana anyways. And then when I got home, I broke the box open because I don't own scissors. And look, it came with these fun goggles. Uh, anyways, next I went to my garage to find a hammer and then I put the geode on the ground and smacked it! And that baby blew open! And it looks kind of like a fruit gusher, so um, please let me know in the comments if I can eat these or not. Thank you, bye.